bam, we're live. What do you think? If I go, if I'm late one minute, let's say I've been late one minute five times in the last six months and I come on five minutes early now, does that erase all those? Is that how I get balanced in the universe? Good morning, Sabir. Hey, what's up, dude? If, oh, Sabir, I got to send you a link. I got episode eight now. I haven't seen it. I need, I need to see it. It is, uh, it is um, in Dave Castro's hands now getting reviewed episode eight of Behind the Scenes. I'm waiting for his approval. Uh, good morning, Michelle. I had to look at your picture, so I didn't call you Michael. Paulina, what's up? What's up, girl? Good morning. Good morning. Lenderman, what's up, dude? What's up? Damn, you've been upside down for a long time. Early squirrely. Because I wanted to tell you guys something. I joke around about this group of guys I'm with, um, and I call them the CrossFit Illuminati or the locker room or whatever. And it is a um, it is a group of guys who I wanted to describe these guys to you today. And and I, and I want to do it without any uh, hyperbole. Um, it's like, uh, you, you know, I, I've never been a church goer, but um, I, I would think of it as, as a like almost like a Bible club, a, a young Christian men's club. I mean, it, it could be a women. There, it could be. I shouldn't even say that it should be a, 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 I don't know, a Christian club. All the guys in the group are. I can't think of one of the guys in the group who does any of the, this stuff for money. They're none of them are driven uh, by money. They're driven by their passion and their desire to, to tinker around with the sport that we have such great access to. They are all the, the vast majority of them are pretty like hardcore Christians, guys like I've never been around. Like they go to church every single Sunday. Like I don't do anything like that. Uh, these are the kind of guys that I would um, probably bet $10,000 on right now that every day they go out of their way to do something nice for a stranger. Like these are the kind of guys, if you're pulling into the same parking spot as them, they pull out. They're putting their groceries away and they see an old lady struggling with their cart. They stop what they're doing and they go and do what she's doing. Um, they are a, a very fun group. They have very thick skin. They like joking around. Um, there's a lot of family guys in the group. A lot of the, a lot of the men have kids in this group. A lot of the, 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 in the group have kids and, um, that changes our perception, right? Because, uh, at the end of the day, no matter what anyone says to you, as long as your kids are healthy, you're like, you're on cloud nine. It's almost impossible to hurt uh, someone who is uh, healthy emotionally, intellectually, once they have kids, because all they really give a fuck about is, um, is their kids. And so as long as their kids are fine, you could call them any fucking name they want. They don't care. And they devote a shitload of energy. So, so they devote a shitload of energy to a lot of these guys, to their religion and their love of God. And, um, and be, being better people that 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 whole thing is that whole group of guys there's not a one of them that's not working on themselves to be a better person it's really it's it's really cool and they're putting so much energy into this ecosystem not wanting anything in return they've somehow found this as some sort of outlet for them to put energy into this um, ecosystem and they're going to be around uh, a long time so athletes are going to come and go. People are going to come and go. CEOs are going to come and go. And this group's going to be there. And um, if, 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 I, if, I, if, I, if I if I was an athlete or if I were in the ecosystem, and, and some people understand, you, you could call it a game. If I was in the ecosystem, if I was an athlete or if I was a coach, I would stay – this, this group this group should be a tool for you to get out your ideas and what you want to share. So you're working, let's say you're going to ride an assault bike for 12 hours and you want to share it with the community. This, this group is your ally. This group is your friend. Let's say you're going to, um, you're a, a guy with uh, one arm and you're trying to raise money to go somewhere. This group is your ally. For all the athletes out there, for anyone in the ecosystem, this group is your ally. If anyone is telling you anything different, or if you heard something said on any of these shows or by any of these guys and somehow your brain wanders off somewhere else, you are, you have, you've completely lost your way.
You've completely lost your way. Do, do not let, do not let anyone who's telling you anything that it's good to stay away from this group, or it's not a healthy group to be with, or that, um, you should be angry at them. They are hurting you. And, and, and I'll, and I'll say more on this later, but don't let, don't, don't, don't let anything in your ego drive you away from this group. This is such a good fucking group of people. Oh, check my mic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Jeez. Uh, who said that? Oh, Paper Street Coffee. Of course. Look at Gabe always has my back. Thank you. Paper Street Coffee. Cheers. Uh, tonight I have a hey, right now I have a guest. I wanted to have I wanted to have him on forever. I don't know why it took so long. My all my fault, not his. What's up, dude? How are we doing? What's up? Awesome. 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 Where Where are you, Street? Uh, I'm in Nashville right now. Is that home for you? Uh, yeah, I've been here like almost three years now. Yeah, coming on three years. It's a dope place, huh? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's there's always something going on. That's for sure. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's cool. There's uh, it's growing like crazy too. Um, like that in Austin, I feel like are just blowing up right now. But yeah. Hey, Street, I'm going to put your um, Instagram account down here at the bottom. What's your Instagram account? S-T-R-E-A-T. H-O-E-R-N-E-R. H-O-E-R-N-E-R. Look at that. Uh, yes, sir. Did I get it? Perfect. Dang, look at yeah. me. Look at me. Look Thank at you. Me. Look at me. Yeah, no problem. That's what, that's, that's what I'm here for. I tried to, life. you know, I don't think I... I I was trying to like look you up and stuff and I don't know you got like blocks all over the place and stuff on your accounts and whatnot. <laughs> I, I'm I'm on my fourth Instagram account. Oh, okay. I thought there was something about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I'm on my fourth Instagram account. I'm pretty sure I used to follow you or something and then I was like realized when you reached out, I was like, I never see Savon post anymore. No, that, that's probably why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm at a I'm at a whopping uh, two thousand uh, Instagram followers. Yeah, you know what's crazy? Yeah. Street is the last account yeah. I had. I think I I think I had crossed over the ten thousand mark, and I got it taken away, and then I paid some dude um, eight hundred dollars in Argentina <laughs> to get my account back for me. Yeah, and then he's like, hey, "Well, kinda." He's like, "Hey, dude, it's gonna be really hard. It, it's gonna be uh." It's gonna be really hard to get your account back. You got to give me five hundred more. So I, so I'm like, hey, dude, let's just be totally honest with each other. You're either these are the three choices: either send my money back, tell me you're scamming me, right, and we'll just I'll just write it off. Yeah, you're scammed. Right, scammed for sure. Or or um, get uh, get it back for me, and I'll send you the five hundred bucks. So he goes, okay, and thirty seconds later, he texts me. He said, check your account, and it was back. What? So I sent him some. Guy? So I sent him some nudes. No. So I sent him five hundred <laughs> bucks. So I sent him five hundred bucks. You do it. <laughs> so now, yeah. So now I'm thirteen hundred dollars in, and uh, uh, so street. I'm thirteen hundred dollars in, and then um, a week later, my account went down again. So I contacted him. And I'm like, hey, dude, my account's gone again. He goes, yeah. For another five hundred, I can get it back for me. I'm like, I'm good. Because <laughs> yeah, I could just picture it by himself. Not a bad scheme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy, right? But but it, but it was fascinating, right? That he could get my account back. That there's people out there who why 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 are you why are you getting your your stuff pulled down? People don't want to hear the truth. I I guess um they don't ever actually tell me why. Um you know, like yeah, there um seems to be a lot of that. I got a warning the other day. I I can't I think I was on Colton's account or Hopper's account, and I and I wrote you're a fucking beast and someone and i got a note from instagram we pulled your account down for a derogatory comment so they so some you know what i mean like and i've said that um exercise which i would never say this again i know this isn't true now that exercise and diet are the greatest way to fighting off disease and and oh are you and I crazy to, yeah, well, yeah I, that'll, that, get you, that'll get you canned real fast yeah and i would that i lost my youtube account for a week for saying that yeah come on you know better than so, that yeah, so 
<laughs> that was just stupid of me. I I wish I would have never said that. But but it's never anything. I don't feel like I ever do anything. Um. I, I had a flat Earth dude on here, a guy who thinks the, the Earth is flat. No, no, sorry, he knows the Earth is flat. This guy, mm. in his mm. mind, right. and dude, half the audience got pissed. And like people I knew who were friends of mine was like, "Why would you give someone like that a voice?" It's like, dude, it's all, chill. It's all, it's all good. You're still yeah, whole. People get mad at a lot of things. You're still whole. Everything's good. Um, <laughs> where did you? you were you at Joe Neal's gym? Uh, I coach or I, uh, program for him a little bit remotely, but no, I'm not at his gym. No, but did you used to be there? Uh, no, like I've been up and, uh, I used to work with like way back when, uh, this company called Boxstar, like super, like way in the beginning. And he was kind of got known through that. And then, uh, that's basically it. And it was just kind of, we became like, Friends started talking and stuff, and uh, he just reached out about some some programming, and I and I coach him. He actually just texted me right now. <laughs> oh yeah, it's 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 what's crazy is this is such a small world we live in. This whole CrossFit world, everyone knows everyone, or everyone had everyone yep. at their gym, or it, it it's it's wild. Hey, how is your internet right now? You were kind of breaking up a little bit. Is that the best spot for you? I'm trying to yeah. Hold on one second. Let me try to. Make sure this is good. Are you on a computer or a phone? Yeah, I'm on a computer right now. I'm just trying to make sure my connection is good here. Um, no, he uh, he's not. I don't think he's stoned. He just has a really deep voice. Sean Lenderman, is Street Horner stoned right now? No, no. He's a professional <laughs> athlete. He didn't, he didn't smoke weed. Come on. What are you talking about? I you smoke weed? I was stoned, but it's only, oh. it's only 9 a.m. I just finished a run, so I'm kind of... Here, let's go to. Nah, you're right, good. You're good. Don't even, don't even listen to them. Don't even listen to them. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully it's good now. Hey, um, um, how old are you, Street? Uh, almost twenty-eight. No, and, holy shit, almost twenty-nine. Oh yeah, you're at that age where you start forgetting your age. That's good. Damn. That's healthy. Damn, you're transcendent. <laughs> when's your When's your Is birthday? Uh, February seventh. About a couple weeks here. Oh, awesome! Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and what oh, are you doing? In- they have the same same birthday as Daniel Brandon. So anybody that's following right now, instead of giving her, you know, all the birthday love, just send it over to me. And uh, we were together the other week, and she was like, "It was so funny." We were, I don't know why our birthdays got brought up, and she was like, "I would fuck." She said, "I would hate it." So if somebody had my same birthday or whatever, blah blah blah, like going off about it. I don't know. It was the most random thing. And I just asked her, and oh yeah, this is what it was. And it was like she's like February seventh. I'm like no shit. <laughs> so it was just it was pretty funny that happened. How, did did you know her before running into her? Uh, well, she she moved to she lives in Nashville now. So is that how you just met her? Did you just meet her in the last couple of weeks? Um, no, I met her. Uh, we worked. I mean, I've known her just briefly just through like you know the games and stuff but um we worked with a a similar sponsor or the same sponsor for like the past like six months and so i was down in naples uh for like a content shoot we did so spent some time with her down there and stuff and yeah i don't know just kind of through through things like that got to know her what's the sponsor can you tell me uh they actually don't exist anymore <laughs> <laughs> oh no shit that was quick yeah it was it was a, a fairly quick thing uh it was the company was called stagger it was like a photo um almost like a photoshop like not photoshop but like layout type app where they would like design your instagram stuff basically they spent all their money they spent all their money on getting you and danielle as uh athletes and then they I, went broke. I, i'm not exactly sure the financials behind everything but yeah but Chrissy is the owner. Chrissy, she she was awesome. She's like all time, really cool. Hey, what did she pivot to? What what do you do when your business uh, goes under? She, I think it, it was kind of like a side thing. She's got like tons of. She's so smart. 
um, she, she, she's working on like tons of other things, has a different job and stuff. So this is like a side project thing. Um, so I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the end was for it, but yeah. Do you have an agent? I do not. It's actually something that I, I've thought a lot about and I'm not sure if I have benefited from never having one or if it's been way to my detriment. Um, Cause like right when I was kind of coming into the sport, I had like tons of people reach out to me and stuff about having one. And I don't know. I just, I never, I didn't know anyone really. So it's hard for me to trust anybody. And so I was just like, I think I can do this myself. And then I kind of just kept it that way. And I think I've probably passed up or not had as many opportunities as I could have and caused myself a lot more stress than I needed to. But I also have everything it's all on me so that's kind of i don't know i like it and i don't i guess it's um i get to control everything basically um on all ends but then it's also like it's a lot so yeah I don't know. How, how did how did um stagger how do they contact you if you don't have an agent what do they say how, how do they reach out to you it's instagram dm hey street uh stagger we have a business here we'd like to work with you can you jump so, on the call Kind of. Um, I, I get like tons of those all the time. Most of them are kind of BS. So I, I like, look, I'll look through and filter through. And if there's anything like intriguing, I'll, I'll click on it. But she actually sent like a whole pitch deck where she like made layouts with my photos that she pulled off the internet and stuff. And it was like a full presentation that she sent through. And I was like, okay, this one's probably legit. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that, that like, sounds yeah. smart. Everyone it's take note of that. that. That's good. Yep. Yeah, either that or like I'll get emails and stuff, but it's hard. Yeah, hard to kind of sift through what the the good legit stuff is and what people just want to send you like free products and stuff. So I don't know. People will just send me money and be like, "Hey, um, we really like your podcast. We want to give you some money, uh, but don't mention our name." I'm like, "Oh, okay." No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I want to get on that. How do I? How do I get on that? <laughs> I get a lot of ads for my feet or my my OnlyFans. So, you have an OnlyFans? No, I said I get asked uh, uh, for it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. In, in, uh, Street in the early years, um, it was after Rich Froning, I think, won his first title. I asked him, I'm like, "Hey, do you get any weird shit? Like, have you gotten any like offers from porn or anything like that?" And he did say, um, as I recall, that a gay, uh, uh, a gay porn site. Um, reached out to him and just wanted him to make a video where he masturbates and that they would pay him big dollars for it. Yeah, I'm sure they would. <laughs> crazy. 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 crazy, crazy. You, ever, you ever donated sperm to a sperm bank? I have not. No. I think you can make decent money doing that though, can't you? I don't know. I, don't, I, I, like, I like those... Um, I like those memes and those, those funny stories where they say if you have unvaccinated sperm, it's like worth, you know hundred times hey. like unvaccinated sperm all right maybe i need to look into it yeah you have unvaccinated sperm oh yeah you ever you ever travel outside the country have i ever yeah do, yeah I, I lived in dubai for like three two years oh shit hey isn't yeah. it weird is that where all the hot that's where like kind of all the hot it, it seems like really attractive athletes with good bodies end up doing some sort of stint in Dubai. Do, do you know what I'm kind of saying? You feel uh, that? I, I guess all the athletes, give me, give me, now that I say examples. that, uh, Jamie Simmons, her husband. Yeah, they live over there in Abu Dhabi. Yep. Yeah, and they're both hot as shit, and they both have great bodies. How about, uh, how about Rasmus Anderson? Do you know him? Yeah. Okay, okay. Is he... Is uh, he no, a, no, is, no, but he, <laughs> no. Okay. I see that he, uh, very attractive, but, um, uh, but incredible personality, but you're right. I, okay. I see what you're saying. He, what we, I love Rasmus. Oh, Don't make me talk dude. about Rasmus's I body. I mean, Rasmus, Rasmus, if you're listening, your body's a thousand times nicer than mine. I'm just saying like, I got street Horner here. Rasmus, you're a 9.8 oh, street, like a 10, four. So <laughs> are you friends with that dude? Mm. I got to have that dude on the show. Everyone He's loves Rasmus, dude. huh? That's, that's, um, oh, yeah. uh, Lauren um, uh, Fisher's husband or boyfriend. Yeah. Um, uh, Barry McCockner, uh, 
Street, did you and Danielle, Danielle uh, Brandon um, share a towel? In the gym? Yeah. Actually, I think she, she wiped the sweat off my treadmill, so that was nice for her. So if you consider that, yeah. Was it, her, was it her sweat or your sweat? Well, we were running right next to each other, so it's probably a mixture of both. Wow. I, I probably should have bottled it up. Maybe could have sold it. I don't know. Were you starstruck by her at all? Was I starstruck? No. No. Um, she's c- crazy attractive when you met her. Were you, did it make you uncomfortable at all? Not at all. No. Oh. She's, a, she's, she's, she's one of probably like the most, one of the most down to earth, like, uh, uh, big name, like big name CrossFit athletes that I've met. So she's really super cool. Tell, can you tell me what that means down to earth as opposed to like maybe someone who's not down to earth? I'm... Uh, I guess I just mean like she's super, I don't know. She's just really real, like easy to talk to um, outside of the gym, um, just about life and just whatever can shoot the shit, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess that's what I mean. She, she recently, I wanted to get her back on the show. She recently did some stories and I couldn't tell if she was joking or if she was on something or what she was doing, but she changed her whole speech pattern and she was talking like she was from the hood. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you remember that? No, I'm not no? sure. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Do you follow her? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I just, I, I'm not sure what I didn't see it. You don't, you don't know what I'm referencing. C- uh, Caleb, do you by any chance? Is that, oh, okay. Okay. You're going to like this. He, he might be able to find it and show it to you. Um, where were you born, Street? Iowa, Dubuque, Iowa. Okay, because you seem like a foreigner to me, and I'm from California, so that makes sense. And and, and you were like a you, foreigner. Yeah, you seem like a foreigner. Like you could be a Dutch guy. You could be from Denmark or some shit. All right. You got a little I'm Frederick. You got a little Frederick Agidius in you. Oh, Frederick. Okay. Oh, here we go. Okay, okay. Well, okay, watch this. Now, I've had her on the show like three times, and I've never seen this side of her. Okay, here we go. Oh, I don't hear the audio for some reason. I don't either. Let's see. What the hell? Caleb's. She kind of goes on these rants sometimes. What is she saying now? Caleb's working hard. (laughs) You got to use your... I'm so classic for Mark Loser. But anyways, okay, when I was in the UK, the last time I was in the UK, and I photo shoot the girl who's on my makeup, which by the way, if she sees this, uh, well, hey, hello, what's up? Um, she was so cool. She's one of those people that uh, just has one of those good energies. You just want to be around her. I, I, just, I, you- just get, I'm just getting the vibe from her that all of a sudden she's from the hood. Honestly, I don't know. I think she just kind of does that sometimes. <laughs> She's just fooling around. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. She wasn't yeah. talking to because she never talked to me like that. So when she was talking, she didn't talk to you like that either. No, nah, I don't know. Maybe she moved to Nashville and now she thinks she's uh, like Southern or Hood or something. But uh, she I don't turned, know. She turned gangster. <laughs> so, so, so you grow up in Iowa and. Yeah. And, and you're born there. And is it is it describe Iowa to me? Because I'm from California. Are you in a small town? How many people graduated from your class? What sports did you play? What was what was growing up? For, did you have a cow uh, on your property? See, see, come on, man. I thought you weren't going to go me. there. Everyone goes there. Everyone. Help me. Help oh, me. I know. I'm on a farm. There's, I'm uh, very basic. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, the town city I grew up in, sixty thousand. So okay. I don't know. Like not like huge, but not like super small. Stoplights. Um, Stoplights. My graduating graduating class was four hundred, I believe. Okay. There's like twelve hundred kids in my school. Um, yeah, but I mean, yeah, there's cor- like corn, corn everywhere, like cornfields, farm, a lot of farmland. And I, okay. But I live like right on the right in the Mississippi, right on the corner of the intersection of Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa. Okay, so there were cornfields everywhere. There was some stereotypical. It, it's Iowa. I mean, yeah, in in Iowa, yeah, there's a ton of a ton of corn. Oh, I didn't realize Iowa was so close to Lake Michigan. Is that Lake Michigan? Yeah, I'm like I'm like 90 minutes from Madison. And uh, and and you got stoplights in your town, dude. There's 60,000 people. Come on, you think we don't have stoplights? Come on. 
All right, don't get hostile. We just started the interview. Don't get hostile yet. Don't get hostile. And, and uh, tornadoes, shit like that? Uh, not, not super crazy. We get, like, all the seasons, like, really bad or, like, bad, like, super hot summers, like, deep winters and stuff. But um, nothing too crazy with tornadoes usually. But, yeah. We, I look, mean, like, look, we have a... Look, Street, you've turned the crowd against me. Se- Se- Sevy, you need to leave California more, dum-dum. Look, stop, stop, Street. Don't, don't have my crowd that. turn on me. Okay, Dastro, thank you. <laughs> uh, and did you play sports there? What did you play? Uh, yeah, I mean, football was, like, my main one, like, growing up. Like, I ran track and field, but that was just kind of to stay in shape for football. I played baseball for a couple of years, like, in high school, but it was all, like, football, 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 and then um, – when I graduated high school, it was like big decision whether I was going to play in uh, college or not. Basically, it was like I could have gone to some smaller schools with like really good offers and stuff, or I could have walked on at University of Iowa, which is where I ended up going, um, but not playing football. Um, I decided not to. Uh, so, yeah, I played through high school, but that was it. Wide receiver? Hell no. I wish I was oh. that fast. <laughs> oh, what did I played, you play? I played, I played linebacker. Um, but, like, if I was going to go play at the next level, it would have been – I would have moved to have safety probably just because I was too small. Played linebacker at the next level. Linebackers on the defense who puts on the big hits? Yeah, there we go. Yep. It, it, and is that you? Did you enjoy that? Were you that guy? Yeah, The linebacker's I pretty aggro, right? Yeah. Like that was my yeah, I love that. I miss that a lot. Yeah. Did you did you start in high school? Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and, and what was the most success you had? Like, if you would have gone to college and played, would you've been able to get on a, a Division two team? So like, I could have I could have walked on at University of Iowa, which is Division one. But if I would have done that, it would have been I probably would have been on the practice or like probably wouldn't have played like probably special teams for a few years and then maybe maybe have been able to play like my last year or something just based on honestly my size and my speed like just compared to the other guys so it was just kind of do I want to sit and get beat up for three years and kind of barely see the field and maybe get on my last year or not and so I decided not to and um uh do you have siblings Two younger sisters. Oh, wow. Okay. So you're the oldest. Yes, sir. And did you take that um, Did you take that uh, seriously? Did you act like a big brother? Were you a big brother, like feeling like you had to take care of them and have that kind of pressure on you? Um, I don't know. I guess, I've never, I, I guess I never felt like any, any pressure about it or anything. It was just kind of they were my younger sisters. And there was never any – I guess there was never anything that really uh, – to be like super productive about or, or over them about, I don't know. We grew up in a pretty good, um, fine area and stuff. Like there wasn't, um, things were for the most part, but yeah, I mean, like if there was ever any like bullying or anything like there's, yeah, like that's definitely, uh, something where, you know, you always have that, that big brother instinct, I guess. So I guess I kind of grew up with that. Yeah. But nothing or crazy. even if, even if like if, if I'm getting angry at I have twins who are seven, they have an older brother who's nine. And if I'm getting mad at either of the twins, uh, the older brother, Avi will come over and he'll start like questioning me. Hey, do you think you're handling this the best way? Why are you raising no your shit. voice to them? Oh yeah. It's fucking nuts. I'm like, who the fuck are you? you, you did you ever have to do that inter- intervene between your parents and your, your sisters? Nah, see, I nope, didn't have that. Uh, if they were getting, if they were getting scolded or something, that would be like, I, the relationship I think I had with my with between my parents and my sisters and me it was a good one, but it wasn't like if I were to talk back to my parents, that would have been very bad for me, basically when I was growing up. So yeah, very. So you kid grew up in a house with a shitload of discipline. Um, I would say when I was growing up, yes, yes. I think as I got older and once I kind of graduated, I think my sisters definitely got some more leeway. <laughs> mm, but yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, um, uh, Walter, I love how, look at man, you've really turned the crowd against me. Uh, Walter, I love how well-balanced people, that means you street. I love how well-balanced people like street find Sevon's leading questions retarded. Walter. 
fucking Walter. I never said that about any question. Uh, is Street's body count the CrossFit equivalent of Derek Jeter? Oh, is Derek Jeter slept with a lot of girls? It's a good question. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. We don't know Derek Jeter's body count. It's um, impossible, to, uh, impossible to say. Did Were you able to stay focused uh, through high school, or were you out chasing girls a lot of the time? <clears throat> uh, I mean, I had a really good GPA, and um, but I feel like I was out chasing girls every a lot of the time. So, I don't know. Mixture of both, I guess. I balanced it pretty well. <laughs> Look at that. They made a graphic with all this? the girls... Uh, Derek Jeter's what family. a graphic <laughs> crazy okay, someone make one of those for street horner that's, holy cow. that's kind of all time i'm not gonna lie that's that's pretty damn that's impressive <laughs> uh heidi Kroom, uh it seems like girls chase him yeah there that's we go good. i'll take that yeah no girls ever i will say him. i would uh, probably 90 percent of the dms i get are from dudes so i mean whatever that means yeah, isn't that crazy? Dude, the, the dudes in our sports love dudes. 90% of the dudes I DM are dudes. 90% of the people I DM are dudes. Yep. <laughs> um, um, what What do you think about your upbringing um, has made it uh, you um, – has made, made it so that you've assimilated so well in CrossFit? It's obviously really hard. Um, it's uncomfortable – uh, it, it requires insane uh, discipline around uh, nutrition and uh, and work ethic and consistency. It, mm -hmm. it, it's clearly um, uh, clearly anybody could do it, but it's not for everyone, especially at the highest level. Do you know what's made you kind of what in your upbringing has made you such a good fit? Um, yeah, I mean, I think definitely. Um, I don't know a few things. Like we were always, always. I didn't have a like. So we had what 30 i think 30 minutes of television every, per day is what i was allowed for a long time like most of my childhood growing up even into high school a little bit um which is like absolutely insane now like like for most people um and even back then most of my friends were like what the hell like what <laughs> um and uh so like that was kind of a mixture of I mean, so is that, and then my mom was, I mean, we were always told to get outside, like play outside, play outside, play outside, go, go, go. They were always doing shit outside. Um, and so, I, I mean, naturally just always active finding things to do with my friends outside. So I think that was kind of obviously a base building, just being active and stuff. Um, but then just having like, it was pretty strict and structured growing up, like with, in terms of, um, I don't know if we had, you know, it was, you're getting your homework done at this time. You're you have these chores to do, blah blah blah. Like, and it wasn't anything like Nazi, like you know, crazy. But it was like compared to most. Like looking back at the time, I thought that thought it was normal. So then, like talking to my friends as I grew up and like people now, it was like, oh my god. Like people are like, what you have to do that and that and that. And so, um, I think that structure and just that discipline that I was taught, kind of growing up, definitely translates into. Like you have to, if you want to be towards the top of the CrossFit game sport, you have to be one of the most disciplined, structured people in every aspect of your life, you know? And so I think it just kind of carried over to that and helped me a little bit just kind of, because if you, if you don't have that, that background, I mean, that's a damn tough thing to do to, to, you know, it's, I mean, you know, it's better than anyone. It's literally every single aspect of your life has to be dialed in. So <laughs> uh to do that is not an easy thing and so I, I guess yeah just having that that structure growing up made me um definitely contribute to that i guess um uh eric weiss so you have great parents yeah that's what i was thinking too there's a great lesson there for parents so he didn't even know about all the structure discipline you had structure discipline and an unwavering consistency in your household so you didn't even know you wouldn't have even known if it was hard or easy because it was all you knew uh, yeah, and I, I would say to, to some extent. Yeah. Um, and it was, uh, like as I started getting older, you know, and was around more friends and able to do a little bit more things, it started to get like, oh my, like, wait, why can all my friends do this stuff? And <laughs> why do I have to be in bed at eight 30 every single night? Mm. Why, why 
mom, school doesn't start for another week. Why are we getting it? Why are we going to bed at, at school time now? Because you need to acclimate your system. That's, that's what you tell me every time. Nope. Your friends are out playing outside. I don't care. You're going to bed at 830. This is school bedtime. School doesn't start for a week. I don't care. So like things like that. Um, just, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. And I think there's definitely pros and cons to it. Um, uh, but yeah, I think definitely learned a lot, like having it that way. So yeah, I would say that I do have, I have some good parents. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, how we do it, if Hugh Jackman had a son, it would be street. <laughs> there was, there was another, there was someone in here who, uh, oh, Andrew Hiller. I love dudes. He does. Nice. Love dudes. Yeah. What's up, Hiller? You know me uh, and Hiller was, go way back? I do know that. That's wild. That's cool. Um, he really likes you. He, whenever your name comes up, he always has like such great, he's just sings your praises. I'm like, okay, okay. I know you like him. Okay. Good. The day he turns on me, I swear to God. It's happened. There was someone in here. I can't find the comment anymore, but she said she'll be she'll be sliding into your oh, DMs. Holy shit. This picture. Yes. We, this is like Waterpalooza like oof, 20, I don't even know, long time ago. What, what year is that? 366 weeks ago. 217. Wow. That's nuts. Hey, buddy, you turned the lights off in here. Could you turn them back on? Thank you. Sorry, that's my production assistant. Uh, he, he's only nine. Um, hey, when you only had a half hour to watch TV, what would you watch? And what if the show was an hour long? Would you would you have to break it up? Let's say you wanted to watch like Knight Rider. I don't even know if they had that show when you were a kid. Would you have to watch 30 minutes and then 30 minutes later the next day? So. <laughs> and you must have hated like, commercials. You're all, you motherfuckers, I, you're cutting into my it, time. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It's funny. I don't know why that I was talking about this with somebody the other day. Um, I finally got like, I, I remember it was the greatest Christmas gift of my life. Like my parents got me a PlayStation, like out of the blue. Like they hated video games to a T. Like I would, ne I could never play video games ever. Uh -huh. And one year, I don't know why they gave me one, but it was still the 30 minutes a day. And it was back when the games took like forever to load. And so I would turn the PlayStation on, turn my TV on. It would load, load, load. It would go through all the ads. I would set up the game and I'd be like 20 minutes in. Then I'd be like playing for 10 minutes. Mom would come in. Nope. Let's go. Go outside. I'm like, Mom, I've been playing literally 10 minutes here. Nope. Get outside. It was, didn't matter. Yep. 30 she, minutes. She, she didn't waver. Nah. She, she's tough. She actually got me into CrossFit. Oh, tell me about that. Tell me about that. How'd she get you into CrossFit? Um, literally just she just started going to classes and um she was just kind of talk about it at home and stuff and i was just always like yeah okay cool mom whatever i don't like you're doing this crazy shit and then one i don't know it was like one saturday she really really wanted me to go to class i was like fine i'll, I'll come in and how old were you that this was my senior year of high school i guess so eight 18 eight. so 11 years ago yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep. Um, but yeah. So I ended up going in and we did a long workout. I, I just remember it ended with ab med sit ups and somebody screaming in my face. And then the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> so does your mom have a good body? <laughs> what a question. <laughs> yeah. Well, she does CrossFit. We got to know. Uh, she does very little CrossFit these days, um, actually. Um, yeah, she's in very good. She's in really good shape. Um, she does mostly a lot of yoga now. She goes to yoga almost every single day. Um, and she will do her Peloton workouts sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then every mm -hmm. once in a while, she'll go into our garage gym and do stuff. She'll jump in with me when I'm at home every once in mm -hmm. a while. But that's kind of her routine now. Yeah. Hey, do you like it when she jumps in with you? Or are you like, oh, mom, I'm like, I'm going to go hard. You're going to hold me back. Or you like it? No, I love it. When I'm home, I, I literally ask my whole family, like, hey, we're, I'm going to go work out. Who wants to come? Who wants to join? And I'll just write whatever for whoever wants to do it. And so I over over Christmas, I pulled them into some long, long, long workouts that uh, <laughs> they, I walked up one of the mornings and <laughs> every single person like, can't walk down the stairs right now. Yeah, I was like, Ooh, we might have overdid a little bit. I got to remember 
gotta remember they uh they aren't uh, quite acclimated yet sometimes but no it's it's awesome when they jump in hey why did she stop why did street why did she stop doing crossfit your mom um honestly i think uh well she did have some some back issues so mm. she kind of stopped lifting and stuff and um so I think that was one of the reasons. So she kind of like put a pause on it, started going to going to yoga a lot, which she ended up like really just kind of like falling in love with. Is she um, doing hot yoga? Is then, she doing hot yoga? Yeah, hot yoga. Yeah. And yeah. then um I think it was honestly that with a mixture of uh I think she kind of started hating it when uh, um there was like a kind of well there's a period in my career where i like when i didn't or i got cut from the games like my last time and then i kind of went through a period where i was like i i don't know if i'm going to compete anymore and stuff and there was just a ton of turmoil and stuff and i think she was super because she was so invested in my crossfit career like from the beginning like she was the number one fan of mine like pushing me pushing me yes go for it go for it go for it and I think she honestly just needed to take a step back and just kind of remove herself from it because she was so invested in it emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, and I just don't think it was good for her mentally. Um, and I think that was also like one of the factors. And so I think she just needed to do that. And it's just been a lot better for her mentally to kind of like, like she still does like, you know, functional fitness things and like, you know, things, but she doesn't go like into a the gym these days and stuff. So, yeah. Hey, did you did you feel that? Um, oh yeah, your yeah, mom has a great body. The answer is yes. There if anyone go. ever asks you that again, does your mom have a good body? The answer is yes. Um, uh, did you feel that pressure from your mom to succeed? Um, no. You know, I don't know. I've thought about that before. I I feel like it was always my. I feel like it was always pressure that I put on myself. Um, but like. You didn't feel like you were letting your mom down if you didn't if you didn't when you if you don't win the games. No, I think it was just more. Um, no, I I never I never felt that. It was definitely just pressure that I put on. Yeah, I think it was just 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 me. But I'm not really sure why I put so much pressure on myself. I guess I think part of it was when I so I graduated college with my engineering degree and that was the, the first year I uh qualified for the games and so I remember I called my dad because this was like right towards the I think I was we had we were graduating in like five months or something and I was like hey I think I'm going to take the next year just to see what I can do uh in CrossFit and put off getting like a a real job quote unquote engineering job <laughs> and he's like what <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> um and my mom was always the one that she was like you know what yeah go for it go for it you should do it um and uh so i don't know it's and, yeah and there's my dad and he oh he, he looked pissed at you too. there he looked th is that is that 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 looks like the actual conversation look at him his shoulders are back and shit yeah. he's like sure yeah. you will get a job this is <laughs> this is actually when they were visiting me in Dubai. Um, this is during a, uh, one of the open workouts, I think. And that's your mom there. Yeah. Damn, dude, you come from a good gene pool. Look at those two. This is like she was like this is like her like peak uh, CrossFit CrossFit Damn. days right here. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But my dad is uh, he actually he works out a decent amount too. Like we turned our whole home home uh or their home uh garage is now just a garage gym they did a whole renovation so that they could finally park their cars in a garage and now it's <laughs> and now it's just a, a garage gym where they don't park their car cars and they awesome. still park outside yeah well, they'll live they'll live longer for it yes um so, so uh 18 you go to across the class with your mom and and you're addicted right away that's it you're just off to the races uh sort of yeah i it um let's see so yeah i mean i was pretty hooked so started started going to like class and stuff um just like competing in class workouts and uh 
went to college because I was like right towards the, when I was graduating high school, went to college. Um, there was no like CrossFit gym, honestly, close. And so I would like dabble in some like at the field house, but it'd be hard because I'd be like, hey, I need that squat rack and that dumbbell and that rower. And people would just be like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, <laughs> um, yeah. but uh, ended up. Um, let's see what it ended up doing my first open just ran i was just like my mom i think convinced me to sign up that year and i was like Is yeah that the you first know what? Like, year i was like the first year you were doing crossfit she's got you to sign up for the open yes yeah, so i think it was 2013 i want to say um and in my mind i was like kind of winning some of the class workouts and i would go home and stuff and i was like oh yeah i think i can qualify for regionals and i think i got like ten thousand in the region or something <laughs> like like i had no idea <laughs> um and uh yeah so then like through then like the next year um honestly i just kind of like kept at it a little bit and started building up i think i did a local comp did pretty good and i was like uh okay like i think it just became my competitive outlet now that i wasn't playing football um i needed something and so it was something for me to go train for in the gym and it was never like i'm gonna train like for the games it was like Oh, if there's another local cop coming up, I'm going to do with my, my buddy, you know, let's, uh, I'm going to go train for that. And then it just kept like doing well, doing well, finally qualified for regionals, trained out of my buddy's garage, um, for two years in college in, you know, in Iowa, like it gets negative degree weather, no heat in there. We like put the barbells in front of like a, a heater. Mm -hmm. uh, like a space heater and like roast mm -hmm. it like a like a marshmallow crazy uh, before we before we work out and stuff uh so i did that for a couple of years and then a gym opened up across the kilo too my last year i was in college so i got to train there which is so nice but yeah uh dan guerrero uh jason hopper is better looking i'm sorry dude wow I agree. <laughs> wow imagine if you were a girl on the show imagine if you were uh uh, I don't know. Dan Guerrero, can you give me a Dan? Hey, Dan, can you write up a list of all the dudes <laughs> that are better looking than me? What? And what if you print that out? What if? What if I had Daniel Brandon on the show and someone in the comments wrote, "I'm sorry, Katrin's better looking." <laughs> oh my goodness! I think she would probably handle it well. I don't know. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Completely. Yeah, you, um, you're. Are you, is that going to bother you at all when we get off? Are you going to like? You going to like starve yourself for a week or uh, start doing steroids or anything from that comment? Is that going to? I don't know. Like, maybe I have to get a haircut or something. Shave or, my or get beard. some or, or get yeah something. Yeah, who knows? Wash your hair. Probably different. go stare stare in the mirror for at least an hour and figure out what the fuck to do. Oh, Judy Reed. <laughs> uh, does he remember Sevon telling him he could be a model in the behind the scenes? Which I don't remember that. Did did we have a run? Do you remember that? Did we have a run in uh, at the games one year? Uh God. If we did, it must have been twenty. Were you doing the first Madison games? Uh, I think one 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 one. I, I mean, know. it was either that or it was the year that I only did one event. So. <laughs> I, no, and I, it, I what a cheesy thing to say to you probably a shitload of people uh say that to you right you could you should be a model uh, i don't know every once in a while yeah, every like day that. hey did you have you ever done any modeling um a little bit just kind of like side stuff i for some clothing brands and stuff i guess but nothing like i don't know super professional but but no, once again, nothing. You didn't have an agent. You weren't doing Abercrombie and. No, I just did. I just did some stuff for uh, I don't know if you've heard of State and Liberty. They're like a suit a suit company. Uh, athletic oh, that's suit, cool. Suits. Um, so you had your you had your clothes on. Yes, I was like fully clothed. Oh, Adam Blakesley. <laughs> uh, yes, Savon, you did 2017, the first year at Madison. Oh yeah. How many times? How many times have you been to the games? Well, I usually say like one and a half because I got cut in the first event and whatever that stupid fucking year was when I was so fit. That was so dumb. But it's my fault. What was the workout? <laughs> how, did, how did that go down? What happened? What was the workout? When I got cut? Yeah. It was the, it was like run, legless rope climbs and snatches on the field. I don't remember the exact Let's see. This is spam risk. Let's see what they want. 
Hello? Hello? Hi, good morning. Is this Kevin? Is, yeah, this is Kevin. Hi, sir. Good morning. This uh, is Michelle. How are you? I'm, I'm Michelle. Great. I'm great. Uh, oh, my friend Street says hi. Oh, can you guys can you guys hear her without without this, or would you need this? Go oh, ahead. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can. I'm calling. Yes, I'm calling from U.S. Document Services, by the way, and I'm calling to confirm if you will be available to sign these legal documents that have been served for you. Oh uh, yes. Now, but I personally don't have documents because it's sealed, so it. I see here that it is regarding a complaint being issued against you. So if you have any questions, I can give you the number of the issuing. Yeah, I was throwing rocks at cars uh, on the highway yesterday, and there were like 30 police chasing me, so it probably has to do with that. That's okay. Just send them send the cops over to my house and just have them get me. I'll be waiting out front. I'll put on clean underwear. Michelle, what Michelle, we're having a conversation. I talk, then you talk, and then I talk. Let's get this going, girl. Come on, this is a good bit. I understand. I can give you the phone number so you can call them directly because we're just a third party and they just contracted me to call yeah, you. Give a okay, shit that you're I guess these documents are very important because there's a note here at the back as well that please let Kevin know that this is a time sensitive matter. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Get me the number. You uh, get me the number. Give me, yeah, yeah. Give me the number. I need to call them right away. Please give me the number. Okay. Again, that you ready? Uh, yes, yes. That, that is eight 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 nine six five mm -hmm. two four six six. Uh, eight 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 nine six five two four six six. Correct. And I also have here the case number for uh, the reference of the file. Please, yes. That would be 3462. 3462. Do you want my social security number or a credit card or anything? Uh, no, sir. You can just call them directly. Okay. For you to know the details about this, this documents because I cannot open it. It's sealed. Okay, yeah. I understand. When you say it so many times like that, like that reveals it's a scam. Listen, if you're trying to scam someone, you got to just say it like once. The fact that you said it five times is getting weird, but I get it. I get it. you're new to this whole scamming business. I want you to know that Jesus forgives you for your sins. You can just call the number. All right. Thank you. I love you. Say I love you, you back. Put, you just say, put say, I can actually put the file for you on hold for 30 minutes. Okay, just just say I love you back and we're good. Just say I love you, Kevin. Good luck. Thank you so much for your time. You take care. I love you, Kevin. Kevin. Good luck, buddy. Do you have a nice body? That was for you, Street. <laughs> you you might want to reconsider that that question at some point. You just Which put one? Michelle's you just put Michelle's mind in a blender. <laughs> she, she doesn't know what just happened. Hey, maybe, maybe I, I'm starting to think that maybe that was AI. Honestly, Caleb, probably. was that was that a real person or is that just because at the cadence she was talking, it was like she was was that a recording or I don't know. It seemed really real. She got she was very off foot by all the questions. So, all right. What if I told you that I was AI right now? They're getting they're they're getting damn close to being able to to do that. Are you are you kind of are are, are you putting your engineering degree to use at all right now? No. Oh, are I, you really smart, Street? Are you really smart? Uh, I I wouldn't I don't know if I'd say I'm really smart, but I think I'm intelligent enough. <laughs> yeah, enough. <laughs> hey, let me ask you this. Let me I'm gonna test your IQ here a little bit. Okay. No. Do you think – here we go. This is a question. What do you think the, the race is of that lady who was on the phone? Okay. Uh, uh, Hispanic, black, or Asian? Take your time. You could even look in the chat if you want some help. I think – oh, is there a chat? <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't look at it. You'll fall into it, and you'll never come out. Don't, I don't it, see it, any chat. It's just a bunch of but, dudes saying that they want to fucking bathe with you. 
It's just that you don't she's, want to look. <laughs> she's uh, she's AI. So she's AI. Yeah. All right. All right. She's AI. All right. Uh, the people in the chat think she's Asian. Wow. Racist. The real Kevin. Asian. If you say so, Kevin. You fucking linguistic. Do you linguistic. answer all of your spam calls, Devon? This yeah, is, it's a great. This is the phone number. I just looked it up. It's definitely. <laughs> so I think he's right. I think it's Asian. Uh, Adam thinks she's Hispanic. Wow. Like, Adam, you're not as smart as I thought you were. No one thinks she was a black lady. That's interesting. What? Why can I not see this chat? I'm look, look, look up in the right hand corner. It's probably click private, and if you go to comments, you'll see comments. Do you oh see that? yeah, never mind. But really, yeah, dude, yeah. careful. I don't know if you want to do that. Oh wow, there's a lot of people. Yeah, shit, shit what? will get weird for you quick. <laughs> shit will get weird. Not everyone's made for the chat. It's funny. I always think the chats because I'm used to it, but but it fucking it, it destroys some people. So Jake be Chaplin careful. CrossFit. Can you have a quick look and check what size his shirt label says? Look at, see? Look at I'm pretty sure it's a large. Isn't that weird? How, me and you are the same size shirt. And I'm like, so I'm part me. I'm part, part dwarf. Devon, how much do you weigh? Uh, 165. How tall are you? 5'5". Five, five. And I don't know if I'm five five anymore because I claim I'm five five, and I five swear five, Colton. Five, that's a, that's a good size. Yeah, I'm stout. I'm a little fire plug. Damn, I CrossFit. Right, and like, right. and I, mean, I got a roll of fat like right under, like right around my belly button. That's crazy. It, 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 it's not so quite a roll. Nice, you got Look, some love love there. Oh my god, I got fucking. It's not even a handle. It's just a full wrap around safety bar. Like if I jumped into a pool, I would just like float like this, like a, like a buoy. Why? I thought you were like, I thought you were all on the uh, no sugar stuff and, and all that and all that. You shouldn't be having that, that little tube down there. I know. I know. But I have a, I, I eat a, a six pound bag of pistachios and a bag of uh, dried mangoes every time I, before I go to bed. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> and seven margaritas and seven margaritas. Do you drink it all uh, uh, street? Mm -hmm. You do? Yeah. Can you handle your alcohol or do you get weird? I think I can handle my alcohol very well. Yeah. And, 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 um, t t tell me what, when you first started getting into, um, CrossFit, did, uh, what, what, how, how do you stay so lean all the time? How are you so, so ripped? Is that genetic or are you like pretty fastidious with your diet? Uh, so I would say a mixture of both. I mean, I don't know. My, like, my, my parents aren't like, I don't know. They, hold on, hold started. on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. One second. Samantha, uh, that's a lie. Show me your fat friends that are fat by eating t uh, too much uh, fruit. It, dude, I'm telling like, I do not sit around and eat like cake. I don't eat donuts. I don't eat, I don't drink Coke. I don't, I'm telling you, I have a fucking crazy nut and dried fruit habit. That's like, oh yeah. And spicy margaritas. But I am not yeah, a, I mean, uh, I'm not a sugar guy at all. I'm, I really am not. Wait, so, but you like spicy margs? Yeah, but I mean, I don't like make them at home and shit. It's like when I go out to restaurants and shit. And I don't well, have one do or two. What do you think they put in those? Yeah, right. I know, I know. But I'm just saying like, like in my uh, house, like you won't. No, you won't I, find, I like, love a spicy I don't, marg. I don't eat sandwiches and shit. I don't like, I don't do, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm a good dude. I ate a lot. I, yeah. I used to eat a lot of cheese, but I pivoted to fruit and nuts. But anyway, let's talk okay. about you. How do you stay so, uh, no one else talk about my weight. It's, it's hurting my feelings. Um, oh, uh, are your sisters very attractive? My sisters are beautiful. Yeah, I bet. Okay. But they're both um, locked up. Oh, smart. <laughs> um, tell me, um, tell me about your diet. H how do you stay so lean? Uh, so what was I saying? Oh, uh, I mean, I think everybody, like, yeah, genetics are a little bit of a factor, but my parents aren't, like, super ripped or, like, crazy or anything. And they were never even, like, that into shape before they started doing CrossFit. So it wasn't like they just have always been, you know. Um, but I think, yeah, I I mean, like, right when I started, like, getting really serious in CrossFit, I counted my macros and everything for probably a year and a half, like, everything. Um, and I don't count anymore. 
Um, I just kind of have a freaking calculator in my head that's just like always going, which is not, I don't know, it's good for some things and it's not healthy for some things. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so I just, I, I don't know. I think I, I try to eat real, real foods and uh, I eat a ton of protein, a ton of meat, um, eggs. Uh, and then I eat a lot of vegetables too, which I know some people now are like, oh, vegetables. Um, but I don't know. I eat a lot of meat, a lot of vegetables, and then I'll add in rice, potatoes when I want to, need to, feel like I need energy, carbs, blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah, on the weekends, honestly, I eat pretty good through the week. And then on the weekends, I kind of, you know, I'll let myself do whatever. I'll go out to eat, eat whatever I want, eat some pizza, burgers and stuff. But um, I think definitely something like while I was competing, I definitely was too lean. And I like, and I totally know that now. And it, and it actually messed me up like in a big way. Like I, I was not eating enough. Um, I was training for the amount I was training and the amount I was eating way, way out of balance, out of whack. Um, and definitely was like super unhealthy. Um, and so trying to kind of pull that, those levers back now, and that's kind of what I've been trying to do the past couple of years, honestly, um, without competing. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, it, it's cool and stuff being the, oh, that should the shredded dude and what, what not, and whatever. But like, if you're trying to do that and, um, also perform and cross it fucking tough and not good for your body at all. Um, so yeah. So, so I'm going to read into what you're saying a little bit. You're saying that you started doing CrossFit. You started really liking the way your body looked when it was really lean. And, and like, I don't want to exacerbate any fucking eating disorder, but your body was, is, has always been absolutely fucking amazing. Uh, it's, you definitely have one of the most incredible physiques in the space. Um, uh, you're, you're saying that you, you were be more fond of your way that your body looked rather than it was performed, performed. They were out of balance. Uh, no, not, not exactly. Like, would you no. want, would you want to eat, but walk past the fridge because you just looked in the mirror and liked the way your body looked? No, no. So it was no, more, okay. it was more of just, I just was kind of, I think I just wasn't educated enough and didn't have the right. Um, I don't know. Like it's weird. I want to try to paint I, you like you had an eating disorder and you're saying, no, it wasn't an eating disorder. Like I'm thinking, no, like, honestly, honestly there. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely some things that were super unhealthy about what I was doing. So I don't know what you want to classify as an eating disorder. But I guess the I, mechanism of why you're doing it would, is what constitutes the eating disorder, right? Like, yeah, um, I don't know. I and I think, I think I always felt, um, I don't know. Like right when I got into, got into CrossFit and stuff, and as I was like, um, getting better and stuff, I never really thought about my body, like looking at it or anything. It was just like, okay, I'm getting better in CrossFit, I'm getting better in CrossFit, um, and then I think maybe as you know, media became more prevalent and whatnot. Um, and I would see like photos of me out and stuff. And it's like, oh yeah, like I look pretty good there. Like I got abs, that's cool. You know, like, I think that's pretty normal for people to kind of look at themselves and if you look good. And then I don't know if it turned into more of a, um, I think as my, I think I kind of kept my, uh, my eating intake the same or maybe even lowered a little bit but my training volume just kept creeping up kept creeping up kept creeping up okay um, the more i got into the sport and it created such a big imbalance to where i think i developed the no this is what you need to eat this is what got you there like you're fine you don't need more you can't eat more you'll you know um but my training was so much more so and i just didn't really internalize that or realize that um, and it just ended up pushing me kind of over the edge. Uh, yeah. What do you, what do you mean over the edge? Did um, you get injured? I don't know. Like my, I never got injured, um, per se, but like my whole last, the last year I competed, I, I mean, I honestly hated it. Like I hated training. I hated, I, I had no, there was no like, 
there was no spark, no go. I felt like shit in the gym. I, mm. it was like, I was literally just doing it, just beating myself into a wall every day. And I'm so, um, and I also didn't have the wherewithal to, uh, kind of back off and know that like, Hey, you need to rest you need to eat more. Like, it was just like, no, like the way to get better and the way I've always done it. And the way I've gotten better is by, I'm going to do the program. I'm going to do whatever's on the program. I'm, I'm going to do it as hard as I can. Um, that's, that's how you get better. You know, mental toughness, pain cave, like push, 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 hard, 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 do the hard thing. You'll get better. And that's kind of always worked for me until it didn't. Um, and, uh, so I think, and then finally that last year, and then it was just like, I, I went to, semifinals had no like literally just felt like a shell of myself like there was nothing about it that felt like like I had no push anywhere it was the workout should have been good for me and I just felt like absolute ass the whole time and it was just like what okay. year was that street what year is this you're talking about uh this would have been 20 2020 2021 the you granite know, game it was granite game semifinal I don't remember the it was a couple years ago. Um, Back when Danielle used to come on the show before she, I don't know what she's doing now. She's getting some bad advice from someone. But um, she she told me a story about how she was on an assault bike and she was riding it when she basically just fell off. Like, And the coach came over and was like, hey, what the fuck's going on? And it was that she was eating, she was training for the games. It was a couple of years ago at Underdogs. And uh, she was eating 1,900 calories a day. Wait, who is this? Uh, Danielle Brandon. Oh, yeah. The girl, the girl you're dating. That's that's, that's not. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't start that. Stop. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. Stop everyone, that shit right now. Every everyone knows it. Everyone knows <laughs> it. We've seen the pictures. Yeah, <laughs> the pictures. She, she, uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's. I mean, yeah, that's that's nuts. That's nuts. Yeah. yeah, that's that's nuts. But but I'm getting that same vibe from you. I'm getting the vibe that like you increased your training but didn't increase your fuel. And you were just basically just, just falling off of shit. Just like, 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 like you were swimming through molasses. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, essentially. Um, and yeah, basically just, uh, not, not good. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Did someone have to have a talk with you? How do you snap out of that? Does someone have to have a talk with you? No, I literally finished the granite games that year and I was like, I need, I basically just said, I need a break. It's kind of what I put it at. Just from basically, I, I told myself, I need a break from competing because I thought that's what it was. I thought it was just kind of like burnt out and I just didn't, I don't know. I was trying to figure out what the hell was going on. So, like, hey, I don't know when I'm going to, I just need a few months. And so it ended up that and then ended up working with some doctors and stuff, um, doing a lot of work, uh, just, Internal. What kind of doctors? What kind of doctors? I work with Wild Health. So we did a lot of blood work stuff. Um and uh just kind of tried to fix a lot of shit that was messed up. Um and that's kind of been ongoing and definitely getting better now. But it was honestly I I, I would never like planned on we had no like time horizon of how long of a break I was gonna take, but this was like I realized that how awful I literally felt. And I was like, it's not worth at all competing. Like if this is how I feel anymore. So I've just been trying to figure that out and get myself to actually feeling good again, which I'm finally in a pretty decent spot now, which is so much better because it was, yeah, I felt like shit. Like 24 did, 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 did you have to tell yourself or did someone, uh, did you just see it on like, at, at some point are you sitting down with someone or you're sitting down, you're looking at a piece of paper and it says, for this activity, I need 4,100 calories a day and I'm eating 2,300. Like, did you have a moment where you're like, oh, shit? Uh, no, I think it was honestly just talking to... There were, I, think, um, I don't know. No, there wasn't like a certain thing. It was just like talking to, to people in the space and stuff. And I think, honestly, the thing is, I think I knew it. It like, it just wasn't... Because I was, people would tell me that, like, my training partners and stuff would be like, hey, are you eating? Like, you need to eat more. Eat, eat, eat. And I'd be like, yeah, I, I am. I am. Or, like, but then I would, like, go and then, uh, like, 
and I felt like I was eating more, but really it would be like, and then all of a sudden on the weekend, I'd be like, oh my God, I can finish this whole pint of Ben and Jerry's and I'm still hungry. Like, oh, that's probably not a good thing. <laughs> You're probably pretty un- underfueled. Um, and it was just kind of like an endless cycle of where it's like, ah, yeah, I think I'm eating more now. And then it's like, nope, still not. And so it was just such a deficit to where I think I, I just, I didn't understand how much I literally was just destroying myself. Um, and I just kind of got into a rabbit hole. Um, but like sitting down, like after when I, when I said I needed a break, it's just been a slow process of like talking to people and be like, yeah, you really, really, really kind of fucked yourself up. Um, so yeah. Do you, do you have a, a nutritionist now? Nope. Uh, I mean, no, I, I work with like wild health, but it's not like a nutritionist. We just like talk about like general things and, and whatnot. Um, do you have a coach street? Nope. No. Like for what? What do you mean? Uh, for CrossFit. No, I do all my own own programming and stuff now. Um, were you at? Were you? Have you been a coach? Are you affiliated with Brute at all? And Matt Torres over there? Yeah, so we have a, a program. It's called Brute Body by Street. Um, uh-huh. so it's like a templated uh, program that I put out with him. So he kind of. Uh, um, I've been looking to put out because I always just got people asking me over the past couple of years, like, what do you do for training? What do you do for training? And I was like, I just do my own stuff because I post like workouts randomly and whatnot. And so finally I was like, okay, why don't I just like, here, this is literally what I do. So with, through uh, the help of him, like and Brute, we just kind of, uh, I was like, Hey, this is like my training. I'm just going to write it out. And then he just kind of went through and make, made sure everything was actually structured, like so that there's progressions and stuff, you know, based on, like people just jumping in, not getting hurt and whatnot. Um, but other than that, so we have that program through them. It's just basically my training. Um, and then I do like remote uh, personal training, personal clients, and then in-person personal clients right now. That's actually mainly what I'm doing. Uh, 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 Caroline M. Wow. I, I, and I really respect Caroline. Uh, she has a lot of great comments. Um, street meat. That's what she. I, I think that's also a good name, Street Meat. There's a lot of there's a lot of things you can do with with my name. So if like if you want to start like a, um, you know, some sort of company or something with it. Like yeah. actually, don't you? Uh, have you had Hunter on before? Yeah, McIntyre. He's a regular. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he just posted. I don't know some post about Street Meat or something. I was like, hey, if, you, if you're trying to do a collab here, we can do something good. <laughs> Yeah, or, or have your lawyers talk to him and be like, hey, you can't use that street meat. That's really Yeah, my good. lawyers. <laughs> um, wh- when you the when you the first time I remember seeing you like really pop up is when you were dating Katrin. She was like she was very adamant on her social media about her love for you. Like it was like that that was she just thrust you your relationship kind of into the into the foreground. Would you say that's an accurate description? A little bit, yeah. I mean, she was, she was, she seemed like she was in a really good space. I remember texting her, or DMing her, and being like, "Holy shit, I'm so happy for you. Look at you, you're just fucking on cloud nine. How long did you guys date? I want to say it was about a year ish, but it was all so it was when I was living in Dubai. Um, so it was like I would go spend time with her in Iceland and then we'd go to Boston for a little bit and then she'd come to Dubai, but it's kind of like distance and not like off and on for about a year. And what was the courtship like that? Like, how do you, she's this icon in the sport. She's bigger than life to a lot of people. She's a, sits on a, uh, on a, on a, on, on a tier, you know, two times CrossFit games champion. She's kind of, you know, alone in this like crazy elite division. What was that courtship? Like, did you pursue her or did she pursue you? Um, I want to take notes here. DM. How to, pers- how to pursue a I, superstar. I want to say she DM me first. And, and then, and then when but you see if I'm that, being honest, maybe it was me. I don't know. It was an Instagram DM. And then okay. we were like randomly just like every once in a while, like flirty DMs, I guess. And then I met her in Cape Town. At, at a competition? Yeah, fit, fit in Cape Town. And, and then it was on. It was on like Donkey Kong. Uh, 
honestly, no. Just met her there, <laughs> talked to her a little bit, and then actually at Rogue that year is when we kind of like started actually talking. Yeah. And and did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy that phase of your life? Was that a fun relationship? Was that cool? What? How did you feel about being th- kind of thrust into the into the, into the scene? Um. Yeah, it was a. I don't know. It honestly feels like a diff- another lifetime. Like, <laughs> it does, wow, wow. It's it's so weird. Um. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I I enjoyed it. It was it was a. We did a lot of cool stuff. Like we went to Milan together and Switzerland and traveled and I got to go do cool things. And um, yeah, I have nothing bad to say about her at all. Um, it was just, yeah, I think we were not, both none of it. Not, none of it looked bad. It looked like it was fun. It looked like a, it looked like a fairy tale. Yeah. Honestly, kind of, kind of was. Um, yeah. It, it's so weird. Like it literally, People ask me about it. I'm like, oh my god, that happened. <laughs> um, but, Did you ever bring uh, her home to meet your yeah. parents? Did you ever bring her home to meet your parents? Uh, th- not to Iowa, but they did meet her in Boston. Yes. And 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 so you have this relationship with her. She's the superstar. You're all over her Instagram. Beautiful pictures of you guys like on beaches and shit together. And then. Um, uh, as it winds does it as it winds down um were you sad did you cry was it heartbreak i'm not sure i'm not i'm not i'm not a big crier i'm not gonna lie um oh that's that's fine no i i don't know it was it was honestly just i think we're no it was more just i just wasn't really in the right uh right spot for like a really long-term relationship i think um, like I didn't know what I was, I was kind of half living in Dubai. I was almost going to move to the States. I didn't know what I was doing kind of all over the place. She was still kind of in Iceland, didn't really know what she was doing. So it just, we just were both not like ready, I guess. For, yeah. Long term. Yeah. It, it's wild because I mean, people come in and out of relationships, right. And, but yours was so public that did you did you feel that that it was different because it was so public that the, that the public eyes on it affected the relationship like you couldn't hit her in public yeah no yeah i mean it's hard to like there's a point to where okay what do you do are you doing this because you actually like or love this person or is it just cool mm. seeing everyone else love you guys mm, <laughs> you right know what I mean? right Right, right, and 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 that's a that's a tough thing to determine and figure out. Right, it's yeah, it's fucking cool. I remember opening up my phone the first time she posted me, and I had like triple the amount of Instagram followers, and you know you're getting all these hits from like, oh my god, yeah, people love this. I'm I'm amazing. Like this is so cool. Like what you actually do? I didn't do shit. Like I'm just fucking with this, took a photo with her. Um, right, and so it's that, and then it's also okay so you're trying to determine so at first it was just like yeah this is great like i'm of course i really like this girl and then you start like actually thinking about it and it's like okay do i what are what are our values or do we, are we the same person do we you know are we actually compatible do i actually really like you love you for who you are and, and whatnot and i like i said nothing bad to say against her at all but it's just right. that is a tough thing to navigate when you're so public and just get thrust into it. I mean, I think the Iceland did have like, I think they had articles in their paper about it and shit. I'm like, what in the hell is going on? Um, so yeah, I, don't know. I mean, her it, star it was, was her star was the brightest. It was at the peak of her, probably her. It was that it was at her peak, and then all of a sudden she's with this fucking stunning, beautiful man who's also in in the ecosystem, and so everyone's like, and, and people were happy for you happy for you guys. And so that's, that's interesting. I didn't think about that. Are you doing it for yourself or at what point are you trying to make people happy? Because we're all conditioned to try to make people happy who are around us. Yeah. And, and I don't even know if it was to make other people happy is just more of, you know, when you post a photo of you and you get like all these comments and likes and stuff about, it feels good, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. it's like, Oh yeah. People love us. People love me. Like, yeah. But like, okay, you you know, what? Where's the? Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I've 
I hate social media for lots of reasons. Um, it's good for lots of things as well, but there's a, I don't know, kind of weird uh, trying to navigate my relationship with social media has been interesting for sure. Joe Neal's uh, to Let's the best go. coach in the game. Wow. Street Horner, best coach in the game. I cannot speak enough of, to Street's knowledge and ability to program, change my fitness and what I thought was possible as an athlete. A successful coach and affiliate owner in his own right, Joe Neal's CrossFit Kenosha. That's, that's my man right there. Hey, that dude has worked his ass off, like worked his ass off. And I respect the hell out of him for that. And he's done all everything I've said for programming wise and more on his own. And it's, it's really cool working with him. Joe, I'll text you back whenever we're, I'm done with this. <laughs> were you in Kenosha during the riots? No, nope. no, oh, that's too bad. That's too bad. <laughs> that'd be, that'd have been cool to go out on the, get a big gulp and just walk around on the streets with fucking 64 ounces of diet Coke and a fucking just checking shit out, burning down. Is that what hey, you would have done? Probably. I'd have taken my camera. Um, Hey, um, when, when you guys separate, are there rules? Like, do you guys have a phone call and you're like, Hey, she's like, Hey, uh, it, it's, it's, you guys oh, are like, it's, oh, it's, oh, yeah. Back to Catherine. Of course. It's just, so it took me an hour and 10 minutes to get here. I can't let it go that easy. So, you you say to her um you guys say hey we're um we're breaking up let's be cool about it let's um did you have to did you guys make a post or hey just let it fizzle out or hey let's can we agree not to say anything negative about each other was there any like discussion like that about how you were going to deal with it forward facing nope and just two, nope, just two honestly, mature people it, it was just yeah um I don't know. And it was kind of like a, a more of like a fizzle thing. So it wasn't like a, Hey, we're like, we need to like do this. It was kind of like, ah, yeah, maybe we'll keep talking. And then it just kind of fizzled out. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I got like tons of questions about like, Hey, where's, why are you never post Catherine or where, what blah, 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 blah. Hey, where's you? And I just kind of always just ignored him if I'm being honest. And so, yeah, never. That was it. Um, uh, there was a great, um, uh no he's not uncomfortable you're not uncomfortable rambler <laughs> no he's not you're you know he's not uncomfortable there was another good name in here um for uh for your company for if you want to start a company it was called um street oh yeah look at this street value hey give me a list i need i need a list of all all the best i, I like ideas that. here Oh, I just thought of a good porn uh, title for you. Street in the Sheets. There we go. Street in the Sheets. I'm writing it down. Put it in my notes. Street in the Sheets. Street Value. How about, street, how about, how about street, street Meat's a good name, though, too, and now they think about it for porn. Street Meat's solid. Streetwear. I'm trying to start a, a clothing company. But streetwear, just, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Right? Yeah. There we go. Yep. Uh, uh, Patrick Clark, uh, so young to be thrust into that role when where your relationship was so public. Yeah, but that's the only time mm -hmm. to enjoy it. Like you don't want to be like sixty and 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 it, yeah, you you got to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I guess it, it, it's weird. It literally feels like I don't know. It's like it, it was like a lifetime ago. Uh, how do you get a jawline like that? Do you have one of those rubber things you put in your mouth that you? bite down on to get your jawline like thousand that. thousand reps a day and then i also made sure my lighting is exactly perfect wherever i go in the angles of how i set up i can tell camera. you've done a lot of work on your lighting and your camera placement today fantastic wait are you being sarcastic because i kind of very just... very okay yeah i'm sorry <laughs> I'm just <in> my... <laughs> I threw this up and i'm like wow i hope they can see me shit <laughs> um uh by the way, Joe, thanks for the money, dude. I appreciate it. Um, so when you when you uh, I want to go back to Daniel Brand in a second. So you all did, did what happened was is that you guys were both at Wadapalooza and there were storms and the roads were closed or something. You just ended up at the same hotel and ran into her in the hotel gym and worked out. Is, is that the story oh. or no? No. Uh, um, no. I'm well. OK, so, yeah, we were both at Wadapalooza. We both had the same. Uh, uh, me, her, and my other buddy had the same flight back because we're uh -huh. all going to Nashville. Um, and we literally were about to board the plane and they, they canceled it. Nashville got a ton of snow. And so mm -hmm. they canceled the flight. And so we were basically, well, what the hell do we do? And so we all just uh, 
got a hotel room together and stayed the night and then flew home the next morning. That's it. You all got a hotel room together. Yeah, we're paying for come on. What you mean? You all you all got a hotel room together. This is correct. Yeah, okay. You heard and that and uh, how and, and where did you guys sleep if there's only one hotel room? On the beds. There were two beds. You and your buddy slept on one bed and Danielle slept on another bed? Just leave it up to your imagination. Hey, but you're a young man and she's this beautiful young woman. Don't don't you feel like that tension in there? Like there's just like there's like just stuff coming off of your guys' skin and shit, and it's like interacting in the in the ether and nope. Um, nope. do you, do you remember what she smells like? Nope. No. Do you, do you think she remembers what you smell like or your, your smell was probably mixed up with that other guy's smell. So she has no, she doesn't know which one was your smell. Of, or, there's a lot of smells going on. I was, I was at, um, um, I was at, um, I'm at Greg's house now and I was using his washing machine and I was taking the clothes out of the clean washer and I thought I smelt him. You know what I mean? Because like I know people's smells. So I'm like, oh, does his washing machine smell like? You know, does Yeah, you probably it, got it now. You're yeah, dog. I, like yeah, I like I know his smell. Um, oh look, Graciano Rubio. I'm not sure I understand this question. Who won? Okay. Um, so 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 you guys are um you guys get off the plane and you go to the hotel, and whose idea was it like where you're like, well, fuck, we might as well work out? Uh, no, I basically was like, Hey, I'm going to work out in the morning because I just always work out. <laughs> like I, if I, especially if I'm traveling, I will, I will get up. I don't care what time my flight is at. I will do something no matter what. And so I was like, Hey, I'm going to work out in the hotel gym in the morning. So you guys can join if you want. And Danielle wanted to join. Hey, that's crazy discipline right there. So you're telling me if you're going somewhere, if you have a flight at 7 a.m., you need to leave your house at 6 a.m. or at 5.30, you'll get up at 4.30 so you can get a workout in? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Flights at 6, get up at 3, whatever I need to do. No shit. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, I feel, I don't know, it just no matter what makes me feel better throughout the day. What happens when you have a hundred delays and you're sitting down, stuck traveling all day long and can't move? I don't know. I just feel better that I've done something. Um, yeah. Hey. I feel better. Yeah. I, that's just world class discipline. I've never heard before. That's that's nuts. And it, and you're you're a hundred percent on that. Like, hey, you do it. What if you're hungover a little bit? You'll still do it. Oh, I've done way worse than hungover. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, even more so, right? Like, kind of kick your ass. Like, this will teach you to get hungover. One hundred percent. Yep. And yeah, I'd literally, like sometimes it's literally just put on your fucking shoes and get outside and go run for a little bit. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, did Street ever buy Katrin a box of wine to drink in a field with him? You know, I didn't, and maybe that's why we we didn't end up together. You know, that he's making fun it? of me. That used to be my move. I'd get a box of wine. And put it in my backpack, and then if I oh, met a girl, I'd take her out to a field and, and drink it. Damn! Um, so that, that so, had to work, dude. Every time it was I such mean, a yeah, boss move, <laughs> such a boss move. In college, I would do that. I would sit next to a girl in class, and you know, talk to her. And then you know, three weeks in, after class, be like, "Hey, I got a box of wine. You want to go drink it in the Good field up. by the lagoon?" I mean, that's a pro move right there. That's like a hundred, and I was like a hundred no with that move. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy. Um, uh, w- one time, this fucking crazy Hawaiian chick that I took out to the field, she was like, "Do you have any meth?" And I, was, I knew I was fucking out of my league. I was like, "Whoa, damn!" Yeah, Who are you I was taking like, out to the field. Like, uh, no. Um, so, so you're in the you're in the gym, and when she takes that picture of you two, do you know that it's going to cause a uh, a ripple in the matrix? Oh, the Danielle, the photo I posted? Yeah. She, she posted it. If you had posted it, it would have been no big deal, but she posted it. She posted a few of them, I think. Did you know that was going to cause a ripple in the Matrix? Did you get a call from Torres and he's like, yo, dude. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I was like, hey, this is good good for my uh, my program. Can we can I just use you for my social media for a little bit here? <laughs> yeah, and she's cool with it. 
Yeah, no. Yeah. You, so, you didn't say that. I, I I don't know. I might have joked with her or something like that. Cause I, well, yeah, I mean, I knew obviously if she posted something like that, she's like, yeah, people are going to be like, what? But, no. Well, um, uh, yeah, you I, talk I to her. Was, what? No, you go ahead. I won't forget my question. Go ahead. Uh, do you talk yeah. to her on the phone? Do I? Yeah. If I need to. I know, but like, like you call her, like you're like, if you're driving home from the gym, like yesterday when you're driving home from the gym, you're like, Hey, Danielle, what's up? What are you doing? No. Oh, all right. Now that she lives in Nashville, like on the weekend, I'll be like, Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Yeah. We'll like go out and stuff. And hang. Yeah. We Every- hung out last weekend with like groups of friends. Yeah. It, even though you're not part of the, well, I guess you are sort of part of, you, you are part of the brute family. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Even though, even though I, when I had Torres on here the other day, I was said, "Is she a brute athlete?" And he said, "She's her own brand." I mean, she is her own brand. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, when you're in the hotel room, who did the programming? Who decided the workout? Um, actually, she uh, she kind of did. She she wanted to do like some running and dumbbell thruster thing. Uh, I was going to. I was actually gonna Peloton and then the, the seat was messed up. So that was disappointing. So I was like, damn it, I have to do your hard ass workout. But it was actually really good. <laughs> and you crushed it? Yeah, I actually scaled the weight up, so Of course. You can't let you can't do the same weight as her. Hey, um, you go back to the hotel room and who showers first? Man. Um she did. I, actually, I think I stayed in and I did some like cable shit and then she went back and she showered and then she ate breakfast and then I went and then I uh, showered and then we all packed up and then we got in the Uber and we went to the airport. <laughs> I'm, dis- I'm disgusted uh, with that answer. I, w- I wanted I to hear. I, had, I wish I had more juicy details for you. I, I wanted to hear. Hey, listen, asshole. I'm green as fuck and we showered together. We just faced each. We just didn't look at each other, but we're not wasting water. I mean, we if kept I was it. smart, that's what it, that's what I would have said. It, that that would have. So that's what gets the people going. Danielle, I know you're really into guys who are green and who are uh, conservationists and concerned about the planet. Would you like to shower together? Uh, I'll stay on my side. I might have to use that line at some point here. You can, please. Thank you. Look that at Carolyn M. Loves it. Great trick question, Stevie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Street, what, what's the plan now for your um, CrossFit um aspirations like in terms of co- competing what, what's the deal if i'm being honest uh i don't know i i'm not sure if i'm like vegan um very much just the plan was kind of always to, to come back and compete at some point but just based on my honestly physical and mental health and how much better i feel not it's really tough for me to put myself back into that situation, even though I still, I train all the time, like not like for the games, but I'm always just like in some fashion. I just like training. I like fitness. Um, uh, that coupled with the amount of money that I wasn't making <laughs> and uh, it's hard to like, I mean, live that lifestyle 24 seven, be that locked in and come out with literally almost nothing. Um, like barely making, you know, I mean, yeah. Okay. You can, I can make enough to do what I was doing because that's all you do. (laughs) Go to the gym and come home and then eat and that's it. Uh, but like, it it just, it's so tough. Um, and it just, honestly just wasn't worth it from basically all three of those standpoints, you know, financially, physically, mentally for me. And every time I think about it, it's kind of what I come back to. Um, I get the itch every once in a while, like when I'm down at Waterpalooza and seeing an event, you know, I'm like, oh, damn, that would be really fun. I'd crush that. Mm -hmm. Then I just kind of think back and it's like, yeah, but what do you, how do you feel 99% of the other time? Um, So, yeah, I I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at. Uh. Will you, will you stay in the space? Have you thought about coaching? I mean, that's mainly what I'm doing right now is 
not not even competitively, but I've transitioned more into just like I have a decent amount of personal clients that I coach, um, uh, kind of all levels, um, people that literally are just looking to get into shape, like super super out of shape, um, to people that you know are like not like top level competitors, but are trying to like um, get better at um, in CrossFit. Um, so basically what I'm doing right now, that, and then my completed program with fruit and, uh, kind of trying to figure out what exactly is, you know, my end goal or the, the next step and whatnot, because this is good for now, but it's, it is also hard to scale. And I hate it when, cause that's like, I, I do personal, personal coaching, personal training, and it's that real personalized stuff. And when you do that, you can't have like people that say they have 50 personalized clients is bullshit. You're giving the same, almost the same shit to probably everyone. Like you're not, it's not personalized. And I don't care what they say. It's not one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, so if you do actual personalized coaching, which is what I do and give people based on their goals, their results every week, you know, what, how, how things are going. Um, it's hard to scale that, right? Cause you only have so much time. You can only take on so many clients. So kind of right now I'm trying to figure out exactly what next step is, what exactly I want to do with it. But I do, I mean, I really like like the people I work with and changing people's lives has been pretty cool, like doing it that way. Um, then I also, you know, I'm still training a ton and like, I just do like random stuff. Like I've hopped in on marathons and like uh, more running events and stuff. So just kind of doing some different competitions as I feel like it. Uh, but yeah basically what i'm doing right now um there was another name in here uh competition program street racers there we go put it in all my thank you hey, uh how's it uh street horner could not be a more likable guy seems like a good dude um, thanks how's it what about um what about this street what about like okay listen listen fuck not you're 28 you're in fucking great shape you're at the fucking 95 yard line Quit being a pussy. Just go to a dark place one more time. Make one more fucking run. Because when you're 35, you won't even have the option. At least now you have the option. You're still, you're still young and strong. You're healthy. You're physically healthy. Okay. Fuck it. Okay, one more run. All right. Fucking one more fucking run. How about that? First of all, I've okay. That's first of all, I'm not a pussy, saying. you little fucking midget Armenian. Yeah, that yeah, that was actually the first thing I wanted to say. Secondly, <laughs> um, that I mean, that's ran through my mind many times. Yeah, because um, you're lucky you still have the choice. Like, there's a time is going to come where you don't even have the choice. Hundred percent. Yep. Right? But it's I don't think you understand how I don't. I don't messed up. I, I like I, I was in I was in a bad spot physically and mentally. Like yeah. real bad. Um, and it's taken me a while to kind of like realize that and like internalize it and be able to like talk about it, but I was not well. And it's 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 to the point of where it literally is not even I mean, very, very little intrigues me about even mm. putting myself into a place to where I could potentially be back in that uh, spot. Mm. So that's yeah. honestly what it comes down to. And I know like I still do like like I, I I do fucking hard shit every week, like just because I want to and it's I know it's good for me. It's, it's, it's clear like, you're at the ninety five yard things. line. Yeah, it's clear you're a world class so, race car. But I think just putting myself into that um that space again or potentially, it's just yeah, it's just not worth it to me. Can can you explain to me and you're you're right, I have no idea what that what I'm hearing is I'm, I was kind of thinking of it as um, like uh, an alcoholic. It's like um, uh, you've been sober for 10 years and it's like, okay, I'm going to have one drink. And it's like, dude, my life was so fucked up when I was on alcohol that I'm not even going to, even though I think I can, I'm not even going to fuck with it. Cause it's just not worth the, the risk. Is it like that? Can you explain to me what's it mean? Like a dark spot? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it's a mixture of like, I mean, I guess a little bit it, like it's, it's funny because I still train. 
like a decent amount. Um, honestly, like pretty high volume just because I like to. Sorry, like, sorry, sorry, better. sorry. One second. Uh, what, what the fuck is the 95 yard line? The 95 yard line is this guy can go to the semifinals easy. That's the 95 yard line. It's, 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 it's the, um, it's the, that's it. Okay. Go ahead. So, okay. So you still train um, regularly. Yeah. And I think, honestly, I think it might be more of a, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Mentally, like it just, it, it was so, I, I, I don't think you understand how bad I kind of hate it, like got to hate it. <laughs> right. Um, it like, it made me like hate just CrossFit in general for a little while. And I've come back around, like not totally, like I, there's still some things that I don't like about CrossFit, but I, there's tons of th good things about CrossFit. Um, and I, it just is to the point of where I, and Every time I think about it, maybe or whatever, I realize I can get very sucked in, like super easy, kind of like you said. And it's um, as I've taken just a step back, like I'm still very much involved in the CrossFit world, but I've also expanded to other like areas, just in fitness in general, and seen how much more just there is out there um, than just the CrossFit world, which I think has been very good for me. And I think there's a lot of things that uh, when you're in the CrossFit space and you're in that bubble, it feels like there's all there is. Um, and just taking like a little step back has been, uh, it just allowed me to grow a lot and uh, in lots of different areas. And I think just putting my toes back in the water like that, um, I'll get sucked into that bubble again. And I mean, there's, and there's, if you can handle it and, do it and that's exactly and you know that's what you're going for and that's what you want to do then fucking by all means go for it but i just know for me like it just there's it's very little that makes me want to go back to putting all my eggs in that basket and potentially mentally and physically putting my body in a bad spot again what's the mental part was it was it the social stuff was it being in the limelight the pressure um yeah, I, um, I think just like I think I think the pressure that I was putting, whether it was external or I think that I just put on myself, mm -hmm. is every single day, and then just uh, when I wouldn't, and I think and I think I didn't release myself to like the like it was just it was all like hey you have to perform you have to perform and if you don't do well then basically your whole year of training which is all you did all year and you didn't have a life. You couldn't do anything else. You know, you didn't go out with friends. You didn't blah, 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 do this, 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 you're locked down. And now, Oh, what'd you do all that for? You didn't even qualify for the game, like shit like that. And I think the mental space I was in, I mean, you have to like, totally, that is not a good spot to be in. You have to have a good fucking reason to be doing this and mm -hmm. really love it. You know what I'm saying? And if you are even like wavering a little bit about that, then it's, everything is on that outcome it's a bad spot to be because you never know what's going to happen and it, when it doesn't happen i mean it just fucking devastated my world what what do you think happened to um mal o'brien like just if you were to speculate what, what 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 do you think happened to her um i i don't know it's i don't like want to speak to it too much because i really don't know no. much about i don't know her very well at all she's from iowa though so that's awesome um uh and i don't know a ton about the situation i mean i've heard things and what just that she, but, she i mean she took time she what we do know is that she was world class she was looked like she was destined to be the next tia Tumi, and then she basically she she took a she took a uh she's walked away and it doesn't look like she's going to come back I think those are yeah, fair just I think observations. And outside guess, looking in. Yeah. Pressure. Probably number one from fucking a million Everyone. different ways. Uh-huh. Sponsors, money, your fans that you you're in you know, social media and how young you are trying to deal with all that. I mean, that's fucking insane. And then so I think that would probably be number one. And then, I mean, getting thrust into, I mean, 
I don't know. It, it, thrust into the it limelight being with HWPO probably was added pressure too, right? All of a sudden you're trying to yep. live up to the greatest who ever did it. Exactly. And um, I don't know what her training looked like, but I don't know, like overtraining wise. Um, I mean, she switched, like went from training at, at home in Iowa to this massive training camp with, you know, some of the, the best athletes in the world. And um, yeah, and it's just, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. And I would say the other thing is like when you're, I hate, I don't know. I think that kids growing up that I, I'm still very much on the, um, you need to play lots of different sports. And I don't, I, I don't like personally, I think if you want to do CrossFit, that's great, whatever. But you, I think you should not, um, like especially in high school and stuff, I don't think you should be skipping out on your opportunity to play a team sport or um, and immerse yourself in different activities just to sit, go to the gym and train to be at the CrossFit Games from when you are 14 years old. I think you will get much better development and overall fitness in every and plus a ton of other positive things from uh playing other sports and becoming well-rounded and um being on a team um there's so many good things that can come from that being around your friends um and then sure if you want to go into the gym and also do a little bit of crossfit dabble in it that's great but i don't think spending four hours a day in the gym as a high schooler is a good or healthy thing and i think that can learn that can lead to probably a lot of burnout and probably a lot of um, dysfunction as you grow up. That's my uh, personal opinion on that. I don't even know if that was the question. Kind of went off. But, in the oh, yeah, it's good. I liked it. It's the most you've gone off. You're getting really wound up. I like it. You're, you're now <laughs> on the wound up scale. You're now at two. The whole show you've been a one. Now we're a hundred percent more wound up. We're at a two. <laughs> we have a, a yeah, street legal. Go. Another great name. Taking it to the streets. There we go. I'm street it puts it in head. street puts it in deep I like that okay. one i just made that one up uh engineer street street engineer sesame street jeez louise sesame street uh, some good shit how the how the <laughs> uh, david weed uh uh, uh I, I don't know who he's calling a dick if he just says i'm being a dick for asking these questions or not but he's maybe very he just, soft maybe he just like dick i don't know oh maybe he does like dick Maybe he was just having an like outburst. Dick, Someone dick, give dick, me some yeah. dick, 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 yeah. dick. Yeah. But he's very soft. So he probably, and, and he feels so, and he, he's, he probably is internalizing some of the questions um, I'm asking you. <laughs> um, hey, uh, I, I will say this. I do see, um, it is weird when you see CrossFitters out there who don't have athleticism. So, and, and like, you see it like when they're riding the bikes and shit, or like there's some like, they have these amazing bodies and yet you're like, Hey dude, you're riding a bike. Like you're on a leg press machine. That's not what, and it's just, it's bizarro world. Right. And you're like, Hey, 100%. maybe you didn't, maybe you didn't get out much. Yeah. 100%. Um, yeah. You, I mean, like I, I, I even know, like, I, I feel like I, I've lost so much athleticism doing CrossFit. Like I've got so fucking fit, but like, going out and like trying to play a pickup basketball game. Mm -hmm. Like I used to do that all the time with my friends, even mm -hmm. in college, we would mm -hmm. do that all the time. Mm -hmm. And like going out now, I'm like, I mean, yeah, I can play and stuff, but I just feel like, like just so I'm like, what is going on? Like so uncoordinated and just like with certain things like that, it's just like weird to be like, wow, I, should be able to go out here and actually enjoy and like play and like feel i feel like i should be pretty good like i'm in shape like i'm like way more in shape than all my friends that are playing right now but yet i'm over here like you know it's, it's kind of odd uh translating that all that time in the gym and then you go out and you're like oh i'm gonna actually try to do something and <laughs> it's, it's not there so there's definitely did you play, did you play high school that. basketball street uh just a couple of years i did yeah but but on the team on the high school team mm -hmm. oh that's cool shit so you played football basketball what else did you play 
I played like so I played baseball, basketball, football, track. So four sports for like two years, uh-huh. and then I cut down to just football and track my last two years. Yeah. Um, when shit was getting uh, sideways for you and you felt it was dark, did you did you go to therapy or did you talk to your mom or did anyone did did anyone ever come up to you? Did your family or friends? Everyone's like, "Hey, dude, you okay?" Could people see it on the outside? Uh, I mean, my mom talked to me a lot. Tried to talk to me, <laughs> and you'd be like, you'd um, give her the the Heisman. Hey, about easy, chill. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've I've tried to get better with kind of like opening up about that stuff. But yeah, kind of. Um, and then, uh, honestly, no, I I never went to like an actual therapist and stuff, which I've been told many times I need to do, and I think that's probably a good thing. I probably should, and I think I don't know. I've heard all good things about people that go to therapy. Um. So I don't know. I think it is probably something I should look into. But uh, when I started working with Wild Health, actually, they have like a health coach. um, And my uh, Steve, uh, Steve Weatherhold, his name, uh, he's a guy I worked with. And he actually helped me through a lot of shit. Not even just like like he wasn't like a therapist, but we just we just shoot the shit and talk about stuff. So I don't know. He was somebody I kind of like talked to a little bit, I guess. What I'm um, getting from you, too, also is, is that the i'd like you to expand on if you could taking a step back so basically you were like this and everything you saw you hated and you took a step back and let some shit in you like yeah what is that yeah do you relate to that meaning like you were really focused on crossfit and and you had learned to hate it and then you took a step back which means like step away maybe from some competition Mm-hmm. And, 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 and like take that off of you. And when you took that away, your blinders and your, in your awareness or your perception of your world grew because it wasn't so focused. Yeah. You, yeah. Not only was it focused, but you were focused on some shit you didn't like. And then when you took a step yeah. back, it let in some good shit. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, it was just like, I went how many years of just every time I stepped into the gym, it was, this is on the program today. These are the numbers you have to hit. These are the times you have to hit. This is this, this, this like exact thing. Every single day I would go into the gym for, I don't know, like seven years or something. And so I, I think it just got to the point to where I, that's why I hated going, just exercising in general, like the gym. And so taking a step back from that and just refocusing it, I just had to recalibrate kind of everything, like to learn to like, okay, no, I do love fitness and I love working out and I love like lots of things about this. It doesn't have to be, you know, that all the time. And so that's, yeah, just kind of like, okay, trying to get out of that headspace, which I mean, when you do the same thing for seven years, you get, you're just wired that way. Uh, so it's kind of hard to, to recalibrate, um, but I've been working on it and yeah. Um, uh, uh, um, David Weed, a therapy is gay. Um, there's straight therapy too. You, there's bisexual therapy. There's all the different therapies. You get all the different therapies, dude. Yeah. And, and look at your picture. Speaking of gay, David. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> Who knows? I love just how prototypical, uh, David Weed is. He's just like, he's just like the, the guy. Yeah. Therapy's gay. <laughs> gay. <laughs> therapy. Uh, um, what about what about kids in, in uh um are you in a relationship right now with anyone do you do you, or do you have a are, are you dating me no yeah. i'm sorry i was looking at the uh the comments i need to stop I you're right you you can't like go down those, those rabbit holes I just <laughs> no. but if you want um, it you can by the way no, no like if you want to just like sit down and, and read a few like this show can have weird pauses and stuff so it's perfectly okay <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, Dave no, Dastro, I'm... David never misses. Yeah, he doesn't. I know it's great. It's great. Just, just like, uh, he, he, like me and you were having a heart to heart in the bathroom and some dude's taking a shit in the stall and that's, that's David Weed. And he's like, faggots. <laughs> like me and you were like, dude, are you okay? And some dude from the stall taking a shit's like, you guys are gay. Thanks, David. Or like, no, you know what I mean? Like it, at a yeah. truck stop. Got it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, he's a pure coxman. Yes. Oh, 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 uh, who? Uh, Street Horner? Yeah. Okay. Uh, dating. Are you, um, are you dating or are you, um, are you? I'm go- single as, single as hell right now. It's. Do you yeah. like, would you like to have a, uh, a relationship that you invest some energy into? 
Yeah. Although I'm not very good at, at it. I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm single right now and I'm not putting the time or effort that I need to into having a relationship. And I know that, but I still would like to have one. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and um, would you, would you like, do you have a preference that you'd like to meet someone um, in person or on a dating app or do you have some sort of, um, I'm not on any dating apps. I was, I, I had them for like, I think the last dating app I was on was like two years ago. And I just got, it's just like, you couldn't, you can't tell who, who the fuck people are on there. Like it's so hard. So yeah, no, I haven't had a dating app in like two years. So you'll probably, if, if you ever end up with uh, anyone ever again, um, before you die, it'll probably, you'll meet them in the wild. They need to just fall. I'm waiting for them just to fall into my lap. Where are they? Yeah. And I'm just going to know. But that, that hasn't worked out very well because I've been single for a long time now. So maybe I need to switch up my strategy. And and um, and what about kids? Do you think you'll have kids? I think I would like to. Yeah. Yeah. Would you uh, w w would you date Danielle Brandon? No. No. Uh, street. Oh, wow. Look at this. A uh, street fingered me. Not a taxidermy deer. <laughs> oh, my God. Graciano uh, Rubio. Uh, when you're built like a uh, street, Instagram is a dating app. I'm telling you. I mean, if I was into dudes, I would be, man. Killing it. But Killing women it. aren't exactly. Uh, you have to be more. See, I, I don't really go out of my way to slide into any DMs on Instagram. Yeah. So yeah. it's just whatever's coming to me and whatever comes to me is like 90% of dudes. So it's not hey, working out well. Do you try to clear out your requests? Uh, I mean, I'll go through them every once in a while. I yeah. get, I'm getting like so much spam these days, though. It's crazy. Me too. Asian girls that just say hello. Yeah, like yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, every time I go in there, but I don't know. Hill I'll, I'll Hiller doesn't clear out. Time. Hiller doesn't clear out his request. Do you know that? What do you mean doesn't clear him out? Like he doesn't like you can't DM with him. I mean, if you oh, wow. like, like basically, if you want to DM with Hiller, you would have to like write a note like on Reddit or on in his in you'd have to go to his Instagram account, go to one of his posts and write in there, Andrew, can you find me in your requests? You know how there's two folders or three uh, folders, you yeah, know, there's like yeah, people yeah. you like randos and then the requests yeah. or, or however uh -huh. yours is set up the requests yeah. one, like, like every once in a while you look over at it and you're like, Holy shit, there's 50 people in there. So you like go through and like you're hitting mm -hmm. accept as fast as you can to get them yeah. all into the main. He doesn't do that. So he has a request like, folder that he, has like fucking thousands in it. He just doesn't do it. I don't know if he has time or if he's not interested, but he's not interested he's in that. He's probably getting a lot of hate in there. Or I don't think he love. gets a, I don't know. I think he gets a lot of love. I think he gets a lot of intel. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like right now, like probably somewhere in his request, there's nude foot. Someone's like, hey, I have pictures of uh, Street Horner naked on a beach with Katrin in the Bahamas, and they sent it to him, and we'll never see it because he'll never go to his request and dig it out. Damn, he's missing out on some gold right there. Yeah. Uh, I don't even understand this. Do you understand this? I am streets five for five fifty five. You get that? What that even means? No, not sure. I'll put my Venmo up though if you want to hit me with that five fifty five. Not a text term, oh. dear. That's what I should have done. Instead of my Instagram handle, you should have put up my Venmo. Oh, that would be good. Yeah, no one's ever done that. <laughs> Damn. All right. Wow. Next time I come on the show. And then we'll do like a like a little strip tease or something. We can do like every you know thousand dollars take off another article of clothing. Hey, hey, speaking of strip tease and doing things for money, when is the last time you've done a competition? The a CrossFit competition? Yeah, any CrossFit competition. Uh, I think that Grand Game semifinal. So, you, um, do you miss that? Have you? So you've done no competing for or a long maybe time. I did. Maybe like, I why not go to some local team? 
Could you go to some local comps? Could you dabble in a local comp or even that might get you? Like, uh, yeah, it just doesn't really intrigue me that much. I don't know. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Because mm. usually those are on the weekends and then I, I like to go out and have some time, spend some time not exercising and doing normal people things and drink some beers with some friends and watch some football and, and <laughs> oh, in case you were wondering, the last time you completed was competed was Wadapalooza 2022. There we go. I thought it was yes, because I think I got. I think um, Alex Smith and Sam Dancer asked me to be on a team like last minute. They had somebody pull out or something. Yep, there you go. Yeah, they called me like the day before. So just two other hot dudes just ask you. You're right. You really are. You're a dude magnet. Dude magnet. <laughs> oh. uh Smoke some meats with streets. It's another. Smoke some meat. Smoke some streets. Street smoker. Street street meat smoker. All right. What kind of fucking crazy question is that? Do you look back in your childhood with happiness? Come on. Wow. Do you? That's I. Yeah. That's now we're getting real deep. Yeah, I think I had a pretty good. I had a good childhood. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't know. He just didn't know. He was disciplined, structured, and worked hard. Hey, dude, I, I really appreciate you coming on. It was great to meet you. I look forward to uh, having you on again and, and, and talking to you more. You're yeah. a cool dude. Holy shit. That was two hours? Damn. Yeah. The time warp on the Seven Podcast. Time. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, man. I yeah, appreciate absolutely. It too. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, see you around. All righty. All right. Adios. Adios, Mr. Horner. We lost Caleb somewhere in there. Caleb had to go do something. I know I should charge 19. Uh, street, send me money for that therapy session. There will be a whole cycle of athletes that um, come and go. And the media guys will still be here. And they'll still be working their ass off. And they'll still be doing it for free. And they'll still be doing it because they love it and they're curious. And I want to tell you that everyone in the media group is like happy and loves all the athletes and it's cool, but I, it's, that's probably a mischaracterization, but I'd say the vast majority like are super excited. They're, they're pouring their energy into these athletes and that anything that hurts any of the athletes feelings um, is mischaracterized. They should get over it. They should lean into it. And at the end of the day, if you don't embrace if you don't embrace the media at the end of the day there will only be one person who's hurt there will only be one person hurts not the right word that's not accurate enough there's only one person who who it will um it will reduce their um what they can get out of crossfit there's only one person and that's the athlete. It does it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like that the access, the 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 you, you know when someone does something mean, you know when you get mad at your parents or your wife or your spouse or someone like who's close to you and you think you're gonna punish them. And so you're not gonna talk to them or you're gonna be cold to them. And that that's always that's always wrong. You're not you're not punishing them. And at the end of the day, the only person who it's, who's going to the, – the, the media doesn't care, like, if you give them access or not. They're going to work exactly with whatever they have and whatever they can do, and they're going to keep chugging away. And the people that are in my direct group are just some of the they're, – they're fucking the guys you want your sister to date. A hundred percent. The whole group. They're the realest, the nicest. They're guys who have values. So many fucking hardcore weird Christians. They don't swear. They don't smoke. They don't drink. They don't, I mean, it's just fucking a crazy group of dudes. So at the end of the day, just be careful who you're listening to. If people are giving you advices on things to not get, um, 
to not get energy from this group. This group is just pouring energy. If for some reason, if some reason the, the energy you're getting, you don't like change your relationship with the group, but it's just a fire hose. It's just a fucking fire hose of energy and just get it, harness it, figure out how to use it and be an alchemist and, and, and run with it. And, and it's weird because you might think it's self-serving coming from me because I'm, 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 I'm the, the, this outside uh, media, but it's, 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 it's truly not because it's, it's not. So uh, be careful, be careful who you're listening to out there. At the end of the day, they're, they're going to, uh, they're, they, the people around you are probably, you have to remember, a lot of them are trying to placate your ego rather than giving you what's good advice. There's a lot of, there's a, there's just, there's a lot of people out there and it just keeps coming back to me over and over. Um, and and I, I say this with uh, peace and love and humility. I don't really care because it doesn't, it doesn't stop me. The Sevon podcast is just chugging along and we're fucking killing. But there's people out there who think that like they're punishing me or that they're going to say something, tell someone not to come on the show or they're going to warn people about me or any of that shit or anyone in my group. And it's like, dude, it does not ma It does not matter to any of us. None of the, like you're only in, in the end, you're only going to hurt yourself. We're a fire hose of just pure energy. I'm not what, what, what's ram rambler. I'm not even talking about you. Chill. We'll take a cold shower or something. Chill, you chill. I don't even know who Michelle is. Who's Michelle? Is this about Michelle? I don't know who Michelle is. No, it's just this big. It's just this big picture. I've just been. Th I've been thinking about it a lot because I keep thinking it, it's gone away, and I just hear just people just saying crazy shit. And it's like finally I realized I'm like, man, why are these people trying to hurt the people around them? Once a month, I hear someone's panicking about coming on the podcast. It's like, dude, come on here. I'll love the shit out of you. Or don't. Or don't. But just remember, at the end of the day, you're, you are, it, it's, a, it's a loss for you. It is not a loss for me. And it doesn't mean that I don't want those people on. It doesn't mean that I'm not eager to have everyone on. But, like, there's no... If no athletes ever came on, if no coaches ever came on, I, I would still just do this from from where I'm doing it, and I would still just be the, I would still be a fire hose of energy, just pouring out. And so it's just it's just free energy. Don't let anyone th think that like it's not. Don't don't be sensitive. Don't get hurt. Don't like. It's, it's all good. I just, I, I just feel like some of these people have this short window to elevate themselves and they're putting in so much hard work. People like Street Horner, why not just take the opportunities that are out there and don't let, don't let people misguide you or not um, put you places where there's just free energy. And, and, and I'll, I'll say like the, the perfect example, the perfect fucking example is Colton Mertens. Nobody, nobody uh, goes easy on him. Nobody goes easy on him in the media space, and he's figured out a way to just take all of that and fucking run with it. We're, 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 he, he's like our favorite, but we don't play easy. To, we don't, no one's no, no one's like going out of their way to sugarcoat shit to him. And so he's he's figured it out. Frenergy, yeah, frenergy, yeah. Uh, ask, ask Hopper if he benefited leaving the show or benefited more by coming back. Yeah, exactly. It, fuck another good example. And I'm not using these examples as like, there's, there's this really narrow scope. I, I, I'm concerned that someone's going to run with it. There's two ways you could run with it. You could think that I'm bragging or you could think that I don't give a fuck. Maybe it's both of those, but there is this spot in the middle that's just, each person has to has to figure out a way how to get the most out of themselves with the resources that are out there. And there, this 
group of guys and gals that I'm working with in the media space, they have so much energy to give. And so if someone's guiding you away from that, you are, um, yeah, ask yourself why. Ask what happened to them. Did they get hurt? Did they, are they frustrated? Whatever. But just um, remember at the end of the day, you're only going to have one shot at this. Your, your career is going to come and go. It's going to, and, and this team is still going to be just flooring out energy. Figure out how to, figure out how to use this space to benefit you. Don't let any ego get involved. All right. That was kind of a continuation from the beginning. I want, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy and I, and I'm just, I, I want, I want to share this with, with the few people out there who need to hear it in a, in a, in a very sober voice. It's fun. This, this, the, the, your, your time here can be fun. Um, the media can make it fun. Um, and, uh, and, 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 uh, specifically be very, very careful of fucking your agents and the people who are close to you who think that they're giving you good advice. Be very careful what the fuck they're telling you. No one's bigger than the space itself. Nobody. Uh, I don't know if I have games tickets. I got a fucking... Uh, CA Peptides got me a... Bat hotel room right at near the venue. Baller. Baller spot already. I don't mean to be vague posting. Go ahead, ask me a question. I don't mean to be vague posting. I'm not trying to be vague. I'm not trying to I I want to I want to be I want to be specific. I mean, I can tell you specifically, I think the Hopper and Colton examples are great. I could be specific in exactly what you mean, but like if you want me to be specific, um, I don't know how many uh, Instagram, just for superficial metrics, I don't know how many Instagram F uh, Hopper had when he vanished off the scene and went to HWPO, but I promise you in the next uh, four or five months, he's going to realize that that was a mistake. That he's a shining star as long as he can handle the pressure and all the eyeballs are going to be on him. People are going to love him regardless of his fucking performance. I haven't seen someone call him flopper in here in four or five months. Isn't that amazing? When before people were saying that shit all the time. And when you guys see, when everyone sees the Wadapalooza content, they are going to shit themselves. Everyone's going to be like sending nudes. David Weed's going to be sending nudes to Hopper. He's the nicest, sweetest, funniest fucking. He's a fucking stud. He's a genius. So just take advantage. Just take advantage of the fire hose. Don't let people misguide you. If you're if you're mad at someone and someone's fueling that and anger and trying maybe not to uh, facilitate um, uh, you getting through to the other side of it, then maybe that's not a good person to be around. All right. What, what's going on today? Let's see what's going on today. Oh, God. I, I have a toothpaste conversation today. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I sent it to my toothpaste guy. Oh, and you guys keep sending me so much cool stuff on how poisonous fluoride is. I love it. Did you see this guy? Um, This guy just retired. I think I have a link of it somewhere. But this guy who is in charge of the city water for a city just retired. And when he retired, he admitted the fact that he was not even putting the right amount of fluoride in the water. He's putting in way less. Made me so happy. What a rebel. Okay. Uh, um, nothing tomorrow. Maybe I'll, uh, a good time for Greg to come on. I might even, you know what? I might even drive home tomorrow from here, tomorrow morning. Oh, shit. I've already rescheduled with Rafa twice. Holy shit. I might have to reschedule with Rafa. Uh, three plane brothers. They went to their water slide parks, uh, a water slide park for the very first time. They went to two, two separate water slide parks. They skied for the second time in their life. And, uh, last night it was really cool here. Here's a, so last night it was eight 30 at night. Um, I had finished working out and I did that podcast on the chick who stabbed a guy a thousand or 108 times. And so I was just chilling upstairs and Greg's son and Avi were playing uh, monopoly. 
And I went to the garage at Greg's house and I pulled out two 10 pound dumbbells and I walked to the entrance of the house and I said, Hey boys, come here. And they said, I'm like, you want to do a workout? And they're like, sure. So I had them do grab a 10 pound dumbbell in the front rack. And then for 20 minutes, add one rep. So the first minute, one, the second minute, two, the third minute, three, and he got all the way up to 20. So the last round at uh, basically he did the last round, they did um, 20 reps. It was pretty awesome. Right. And then after that, um, I took the uh, 10 pound dumbbells and I gave Avi one and I had him do shoulder press, five reps, other hand, five reps, uh, and then trade off with uh, Greg's son. And I did that for 10 rounds. And it's so cool because they were just in the middle of playing Monopoly. I'm like, hey, you guys want to work out? They're like, sure. And they came over and they did that 30 minute workout and then we laughed and giggled. And then, and then that was it. Rambler seems easy. Okay. I'm glad you, Greg, glad you mentioned that. So, uh, Avi weighs 60 pounds and he used a 10 pound weight. So if you're 180 pounds, you can grab a 30 pound weight and go ahead and do that. Grab a 30 pound D ball or a 30 pound dumbbell and put it in your front rack and, and, and get at it. Uh, Hey, Sevon, uh, when does episode seven, seven, seven come out? I think it's out. I think it's out. You guys can all leave and go watch it now. All the members can, can leave. Let me see. Uh, I can show you some, some stuff of episode. Um, let me see, uh, content episode seven. No, it says unlisted. It's not out. Hold on. Let me let me call Sousa here really quick. Hold on. Uh, is it out? I skied. I'm a great skier. I forgot what a great skier I, I am. Dan Gross said, "Sevi, did you ski?" Yeah, I was. I, I forgot. I'm a fucking great skier. I didn't. I forgot. I hadn't. I had skied once in the last thirty years, and then and then I skied this weekend. I'm dope. I'm so good. It's crazy. Ski backwards fucking forward parallel all I, I mean i can't jump and shit but i'm dope i look good i look like a little fucking athlete out there uh what's Sousa's phone number oh he's in my favorites uh matt Sousa. okay here we go i think kayla was supposed to make it live at 8 30 or someone was i can't tell if this is it i don't want to make the wrong episode live what episode are we on we're on seven really you pay an extra 10 bucks to see me ski really yeah, it's it's cool. Uh, we're getting scammed uh, on these memberships. Yeah, about time you realize that. There should be ten episodes out already. I agree. Definitely getting scammed. So this was the episode that was supposed to come out Wednesday, and we pushed it to Friday to release the Wadapalooza doc. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I can make this. I need to call. I need to call. Maybe I should call Brandstetter. Maybe I should call Brandstetter. Will Brandstetter? I don't know what's going on here. Let me see what's going on. Will Brandstetter? Let me call him. We'll get this taken care of. Yeah. Hey, we're live on the air. I got a question for you. Am I supposed to make um, episodes? Did it. Oh, you did. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. Oh. Okay. Bye. Well, shit. There you go. It's live. It's up now. There, Renee. There you go. It looks like it's long. Let me refresh this page. I would want a. Uh, Mm, oh yeah i would watch it with you guys but i'd be stopping it like every three minutes and you guys would be yelling at me and shit knock it off stop stopping it stop it stop it down don't don't stop doing that knock it off oh dan Guerrero, it's available 33 seconds ago Uh, okay. Uh, all right. 
Uh, see you guys soon. I don't know when. Okay. Bye-bye.